the round table live, hosted by me, Baron Taffy, joined by Mathis Games, Rock Lee Smile, now Packet Patrol, welcome, now Packet Patrol to the show, hi there! Hello! Hello, anybody! Hey, everybody! It's me, it's Rob, How you it's doing Alpaca today? Patrol. Rob, uh, the, uh, the owner and purveyor of YouTube.com slash Alpaca Patrol, here joining us on the show today. What? That's the purveyor. I am the, the purveyor. Right. Sorry, the, what did yeah. I say? Purveyor or that's proprietor. Not a word. Prepare. Yeah. I think I Prepare maybe combined this. them. That's, that's a good word, prepare. No, yeah, I'm going to stick with that now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll with that for a while. Owner and oh, Hello. Yeah. No Ryan this week. Yeah, no Ryan this mm. week. He's out visiting uh, his folks, so good good luck to him and his travels on tiny little planes. And uh, Rob is here in his stead. Rob, how how are you uh, how are you doing in the in the gaming world, man? What have you been up to? What have you been playing? Uh, I'm doing good. I uh, I recently started playing some Dark Souls three, mm -hmm. uh, which is which is nice. I mean, I, I'm I'm currently enjoying that. Uh, was playing. I don't know, I've been playing, been playing a, a couple things. I uh, played some Quake Live recently with, with Nick. Uh, yeah. That was, Ooh, yeah. That was pretty cool. Yeah, how to make it work. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we did it. It a port forwarding issue. I got it <laughs> sorted out. First time in my life I've been able to port forward successfully. Wow, that, yeah, that's, that's that. impressive all on its own. Yeah. One of these days, Very port forwarding proud. won't be a thing anymore. We'll all laugh at the, uh, at the, the glory days, yeah, I guess. I, the pseudo I said that on Twitter, and years. people were like, man, that's already a thing. There's something called UPnP, and it already works. And I was like, well, it doesn't, because it doesn't. So <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic Twitter <laughs> argument right there, man. Yeah. Just broke it down to its finest points right away. <laughs> All right, well, on today's docket, we've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. We're going to do a quick little PAX East 2016 recap. Two of these guys were there in person. Also going to be talking about new uh, copyright news, which is always just the f funnest and most interesting topic for the viewer, talking about YouTube copyright policy. It'll be fun. There's a big, big uh, news and announcement this week, though, regarding that, so important to talk about. Uh, speaking of big news announcements, Nintendo NX announced, officially coming next year, March of 2017. Definitely going to be talking about that. As well as Sony's PlayStation Network prevalence, doing pretty well there. Uh, a few games on the docket today as well, notably Hitman Episode 2 Sapienza, which just came out this week. Uh, Night Squad, Mirror's, S Mirror's Edge Catalyst, and Dreadnought actually just came out of... Did it just come out of beta? Is that what was going on with that, Mathis? It was doing... They were doing, like, uh, like beta weekends, and now it's officially in, like, uh, closed beta, but you can play it all the time mm -hmm. if you're in. So. Okay, so there we mm -hmm. go. And uh, that is our docket. Let's start off with PAX East 2016. All done, all wrapped up, all finished. You guys, Mathis and Rockley Smile were there this this year. Uh, yeah. What was your... Okay, so I know you guys probably didn't play too many games this year, right? But No. Out of those you played, hopefully there's at least, like, one? <laughs> right? <laughs> there's got to be, like, a favorite, right? So let's just get that out of the gate. What was your, what was your favorite right. game you played at PAX this year? My favorite was don't drink too much and get a headache in the morning. Ah, that, I yeah, played a lot a of that. Classic. Uh, really? It was a, oh, it's, it's a tough game pack. to win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but for real though, Night Squad actually was one of the ones that I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. I played a lot of uh, like four-player, multiplayer games that I was trying to scout out for the NLSS and things like that. And Night Squad was one of them. There's one called Arena Gods that I checked out. Uh, Blade Ballet, I think, was another one, and the the Forgettable Dungeon, which apparently wasn't that forgettable because I remembered it for the show. Nice. Uh, and then there's there's one other one that Math is going to mention, but uh, for the most part, that was, was kind of it. Like we just kind of wandered a lot. We didn't spend a lot of time really getting too in depth. Uh, there were more things than I expected there to be, but also it was maybe the most packed packs that I've been to. So it was a little difficult to get to see much of anything. There was just, everybody had lines. Uh, all the developers were busy talking to people the whole time. And uh, I just I just made the rounds, said said my quick waves, and moved on. Do you think we're gonna get to the point where there's gonna be like a PAX and then an auxiliary PAX? Because the PAX tickets out. are only sell. Yeah, I guess yeah. that's basically yeah, really. true. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they should have just called that auxiliary PAX. I probably would. Right. I would have been more likely to go if they had called it that. Uh, I, I think it would be great if they did a day that was just like press day. And oh, only yeah. press could get in. Uh, well, give like every single day a press hour instead of just Friday. Dude, an hour is not enough. They need a whole Agreed, day. Agreed, but at least as if they at least one game. extend it. Right, <laughs> but as long as they, if they do it all three days, that's at least three games that we don't have to worry about waiting in line for. Nope. Yeah, yeah. But 
for me, like, uh, I, I'm like Nick, I kind of wandered. I did a lot of, like, the little games that had no lines, so I remember, like, none of them because they were just terrible. Uh, but there was, obviously, Necropolis, which me and Nick both played, which I'm eager to talk about a little bit. And I played one, I think it's on Steam, right? It's, like, five bucks. It's, like, a Western shooter where you're just trying to press, like, ten buttons faster than the other person. Uh, it's, I, know I, I didn't see it. that one. Yeah, me and my brother played it. It was, uh, it was interesting. It's just, like, a versus game. Where there's like you each have button prompts, and the first one to press all ten button prompts shoots the other person. Uh, it's all right. I don't, yeah, it was draw thing. Yeah, it was yeah. it was pretty fun. But, um, I'm curious what your thoughts on Necropolis are though, Nick, because that's the one I, I waited in line to play because I remember enjoying oh, it the first. I didn't time. get a line. I walked right up to it. I got I so had a line. I had a line. Um, I remember really liking it the first time I played it, but when I played it this time around, I don't know if it's because I've been playing Dark Souls or whatever. Um, but I didn't enjoy it as much. Mm. It was it felt sluggish and unresponsive, and clearly still in development. And there was a lot of frame rate problems. Like I was like it was stuttering every once in a while for me. Um, but the combat didn't feel as responsive as something like yeah. Dark Souls did, and it it threw me off. I was I didn't like it that much. I don't know if it why, but it just didn't feel good. Well, okay. So to clarify for people that haven't ever heard of this, it's a oh, basically a Dark Souls esque indie game where it's procedurally generated. It has sort of like a neon uh, meets sort of esoteric, sort of like hyper light drifter art I got the style trailer going for people here too. Yeah. yeah, it's a real weird looking game, but it plays very very similarly to Dark Souls. So much so that I spent a while trying to memorize the gamepad until I realized it's actually just Dark Souls controls. Dark Souls <laughs> controls. Yep. <laughs> exactly exact same the same. Thing. Thing. Yep. Uh, which was comforting because I had just played through Dark Souls three for fifty hours. So it was almost like, you know, putting on a nice warm glove. Uh, is that a thing people say? I don't think it, it is. It sounds like maybe <laughs> something people say. It is. So Bandai Namco is a part of this, though, right? They are publishing the game, it seems. Or maybe not are directly they really? so, but they? they're listed there. Yeah, they're they're part of it. Wow. Mm. They're on the trailer. That's interesting. Even. I didn't know that either. Mm-hmm. Well, I agree that it did feel a bit uh, laggy with controls. I didn't get frame rate issues, but it felt like you were just like a second behind everything you were trying to do. Yeah, uh, which I, I can't tell if it's like an artistic decision or it's just still in development and they're working stuff out, trying to find the right balance. It seemed easy until it seemed way too hard, which was weird. Mm. It just kind of like jumped the shark from one side to the other. But I only had maybe 15 minutes to play it, so it's not like I have the most nuanced perspective here. Right, yeah. That's it's that's kind of where I stand kind of uh, as well. Like We didn't have a ton of time with it. They let you play, what, for five or six minutes, and they threw you into an arena, and you kind of just played until you either died or won the arena. Uh, I, it has promise. I actually really like the art style. I like how it looks, and I, I think the idea of the game is really cool, that, that Dark Souls combat mixed with like ran procedurally randomly generated levels uh, with that roguelike kind of idea behind yeah. of like loot drops and all that stuff but the combat definitely needs to shape up a bit before it's ready and i know it's supposed to come out this summer so there's not that much time to go so i'm curious like what they're going to end up doing or what they're going to end up changing but the combat just didn't feel smooth and again it's probably because we're both coming directly from dark souls 3 where at least on pc you know it's smooth 60 fps combat's incredibly responsive it's satisfying yeah. and then going to necropolis it's like oh all right not not well, as good there's potential for issue here because we're dealing with two factors that are largely the differentiating factors between the two, and that's one is the very strong combat, which we've gotten very used to over the years. The other one is the level design, and if you're coming yeah. from a procedurally designed uh, layout, basically it might end up being really boring and drab or repetitive or you know just not interesting. Uh, and yeah. that's one thing Dark Souls doesn't have is it's very meticulously designed with a lot of little cubby holes and nooks to uh, to look around, and I'm sure those will be in there. But to what degree they manifest is uh, yet to be seen. So hopefully they'll overcome the uh, the shortcomings of procedural design. Indeed. Well, you know, you know, uh, to that point. I mean, I didn't play it at at 2016. I did play it at 2015. Oh, nice. I enjoyed it there. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> to that point, though, if you guys are saying you're having trouble with the combat system, uh, that is that is a, a big problem because, uh, like like Nick was saying, the two kind of main things with with Dark Souls is the level design and the combat. And they're already not going to have the level design, really. Or yeah, at least, right. uh, you know, a very not crafted experience, right. Right, experience exactly. there. Yeah. So if the combat's not working either, that's that's not a good sign. It's 0 for 2 then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too hot at that yeah, point. Of those two arbitrary criteria I assigned, yes, right. they might be 0 for 2. <laughs> Hopefully Which not. we've now decided are the only two <laughs> criteria <laughs> these games deserve to be judged by. Well, at the very least, the combat is going to be a huge factor for the game because that's the focus. Right, so. yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
I am pretty sure this game is going to make the rounds amongst our entire community, though. Like, all of yeah. us are probably going to be playing the shit out of it, uh, sort of Gungeon style. So it will have plenty of opinions on it in the future. I'm That's really curious to see how much influence Bandai Namco actually has, like, directly with the uh, with the development here. I know that they're behind it now. I just am. I'm finding out most of what I know about this game today with, uh, with today's show, <laughs> actually. So I'm really curious to look further into this. That is cool, though. I'm glad they're, uh, I'm glad they're continuing with the Dark Souls route, you know? Like, we need more of those ones. We need more of those Absolutely. Dark Souls games. Absolutely. There's a lot, though, yeah, lately. Really <laughs> lately, yeah. It's the new fad, man. It's gonna yeah. be the new thing for a while. Moses and Dark That's Souls, fine. baby. <laughs> so, Rob, you, uh, you did not have the privilege of attending PAX East this year, but was there anything coming out of the show that you had your eyes on this year? I said this year twice, um, just to make sure you're, you're well aware of right, what I'm focusing yeah, no, this, year, this year? This <laughs> year. This year. Uh, no, you know, I, I didn't really, I didn't really follow what exactly was at PAX East. Um, mm -hmm. I do know that they were doing, I, I assume that they had a big dreadnought thing there as they have for every didn't year for the past, though. like, did they? I didn't <laughs> I see it. I don't think they did. I don't remember seeing it. Did they, did they actually not? That's surprising. It's yeah, been at like yeah. every one. Um, but no, I, I actually, I, I wanted, to, I wanted to try Necropolis again, actually, um, mm -hmm. more than, more than other things. Cause I mean, that's, that's one that's on the horizon that I'm pretty excited about. Yeah. Um, because I enjoyed it at 2015, and I think that type of... I, I just wish more games would rip off Dark Souls' combat in general, pretty much. <laughs> like, not you to... Not that, to... <laughs> but I don't know if you've, you know, yeah. like, there's, there's maybe a deluge of those that you haven't tried out yourself. Yeah, well, there, yeah, there have been some... Dude, that... I gave you Bound by Flame literally last night. <laughs> I know! <laughs> I, gotta, I, yeah, I gotta try it. The only one that I remember, other than Salt and Sanctuary, which just came out, but that's mm -hmm. PS4 exclusive right now, uh, was Lords of the Fallen, and I remember that game yeah. was like supposedly yeah, hot man. smash. No, that yeah, I was, it was I don't know if it was, I thought it was just mostly like the PC version of the game just had it was, a, a ridiculous amount of problems, right? It mm. wasn't that the game was hot trash, it was just kind of bland, and it's like, why would you bother? I think it was Bound by Flame that was the hot trash one, and that's Bound the one I gave to Rob. I don't even well, know what that is. I can yeah, see you with, getting with, those like, two titles confused, given just how goddamn ambiguous they are. Yeah. Lords of the <laughs> Fallen the... and Bound by Flay. Where even are well, we? <laughs> that could have been the subtitle to Dark Souls 3. Dark <laughs> no, Souls 3, Bound by Flay. No, that's the subtitle to Lords of the Flame, Fallen, yeah. man. Lords of the Fallen, colon, Bound by, bound Flame. by Flame. It's right bound there. Bound by Flame. Well, they're I'll all interchangeable. I'll give Bound by Flame this. The screenshots <laughs> they have are, are look pretty. Dude, yeah. Slain... There's games mm, out there that right. the screenshots don't. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Oh, I, I I know, but I'm just saying. I'll I'll All have right. you know, Matt. Mean the screenshots drop. can sometimes be misleading, so you want to keep an eye out on <laughs> those. Dark Souls Two. <laughs> oh, oh no. Really, really there. <laughs> but yeah, um, no. I mean, with, with, with Lords of the Fallen, from what I saw of it, I didn't play it. Uh, it's just like the combat didn't feel weighty enough, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, that's sort of the the fun with hitting things in Dark Souls is you feel like you're swinging this big giant sword and bashing into something and cutting it up yeah, like that's big old dong you're just swinging around <laughs> exactly. here woo slam dong on their <laughs> that's face been a problem for years and to, for the Dark Souls being the first one that really did the whole thing where it's like you hit something it actually physically bounces off the way you hit it mm. is a big deal most mm -hmm. games you slash right through an entire body. And then a hit box pops up or a counter pops up and says, you did this much damage. That right. doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to have that presence in the space that it feels like the object you're holding hit something physically. So yeah. that's a step forward, and we don't want to go backward from that. It just doesn't feel right anymore. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Indeed. I'm seeing of the, uh, of the most pertinent news coming out of the show floor, uh, Cuphead still looks great. Which is really yeah, entirely yeah, surprising. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let it die. Lets you fight mutants in your underpants. Okay. Good headline there. I like that. I like that's, that. That's One game I wanted to see a pack and I didn't get a chance to was Dead by Daylight. Mm -hmm. So that's mm. a four v one like uh, it's a multiplayer game. Four v one. Four games. survivors. One killer. Basically. So, yeah. Think of it kind of. I guess like evolve. But it's uh, like one person plays basically like Jason or whatever in like a camp and you're hunting down the four survivors and they're trying to escape. That's uh, that looked interesting. Um, it's out in June, I believe, and I'm looking forward to checking that out. Hopefully it's not going to suck. Mm. Dead by night, it was called dead by daylight. dead by daylight, yeah. dead by Total daylight. Opposite. And then they should do dead by moonlight, which is the werewolf version. That'd be oh, sweet. Okay. Bring it on. Mm -hmm. Easy. Look, just don't destroy it with DLC and we're good to go. Oh. 
DLC it. Just DLC <laughs> it right in. Dead by Moonlight, the <laughs> DLC. Available on the same day. So that's <laughs> that's smart. They got a great foundation, man. There's all kinds of light that you can be dead by. You can be dead by sunlight. You can be dead, dead by, by dying light. Radioactive light. Oh, man, all kinds of shit. Good start. <laughs> Anybody else got uh, PAX East 2016 news? We can move on now, I think. Yeah, no, we again, I don't think we played too much while we were there. It was largely about hanging out with the guys and seeing yeah, the sights. Yeah, the good times, the man. Boston thing. Yeah. I do want to mention, I thought it was kind of funny, uh, Ryan and I ended up going to lunch th uh, through the PAX East weekend here in Seattle. And we went to, um, well, we went to the Cheesecake Factory. Oh, yeah, I got that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Did you see Vince Young there? Surprisingly, yes. He, he spends a lot of time. <laughs> he really does enjoy them. Uh, but we ended up going to the Cheesecake Factory, not only the Cheesecake Factory, much to the chagrin of Mathis, I'm sure, but also we went to the, she the Cheesecake Factory literally across the street from the PAX Prime Convention Center. So we were having our own little Did mini you just packs. miss PAX so much? Yeah, no, we had to, we had to feel like that vicarious uh, hanging out with the, with the crew oh, within, within a Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> Apparently Kate really wanted to go all throughout Prime, but never could because the lines were always out through the door. So we got our Going moments. to any restaurant anywhere near a convention is... What a weird yeah. thing to want to go to that badly. I know, right? I've never <laughs> been, actually, and it was, it was, you know, it was okay. Not my favorite food. <laughs> What did you get? I got, uh, th this is great podcast material. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we went for brunch, so I think I just got, like, a really simple, like, sampler platter of stuff, which is boring, I know. I really, like, I, I had this... It wasn't that good. I got the most boring dish on the menu. Yeah. It's, no, it is my fault. I, I was just going to say, I, I made this new decree to myself that if I go out to a restaurant, I have to order something that I would never make myself. Right, yes, so, that is a good rule. So, right, like, that's good. I, I, I try not to get like pancakes and bacon and eggs because like I could fucking make that in ten minutes, but I did it this time and that's on me. So that's that's my bad. Mm. I, I won't, I won't disparage the good name of the Cheesecake Factory here, especially not in front of <laughs> Mathis. And not in front of me. <laughs> let's just say that. God. God. Did you not maybe, really have a good name? What? Did you not get cheesecake? I didn't get cheesecake either, and I know that's probably it's one of the cardinal sins. Cheesecake. <laughs> we need to move on before I get mad. <laughs> What's your favorite cheesecake, Mathis? <laughs> You've got to have one, right? Of course you have one. I remember the peanut butter chocolate cheesecake they had was really good, oh, like the Reese's yeah. one. Mm -hmm. That was really, really good. We'll have our food. Don't ever get the don't point. ever get the peppermint cheesecake during Christmas time though, because it tastes like toothpaste. Don't eat oh, it. Oh, it well, wait, sounds only bad. Only during Christmas time though. What do they fill it with normally? Special offer. Oh, there's like 30 cheesecakes at any given time. Yeah, but you're yeah, saying like the peppermint one only tastes terrible during Christmas. Don't the, like the peppermint only shows up during Christmas. Oh, okay, like gotcha, it's a holiday yeah. cheesecake. No, it's like the pumpkin one only shows up around Halloween. Exactly. Yep. Mm. I should have changed the topic to Cheesecake Factory a long time ago. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we were actually going to change it over to uh, even more interesting stuff. Let's talk about copyright. So, YouTube, right. if you did not know, let me... I, well, okay, I feel like every time we have this story, we are introducing new people to... Well, well Bear, for the audience, what is YouTube? Just in case they <laughs> 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 I'm going to dial this back for those of you who are just connecting to the internet for the first time to join us today. Uh, so, no, seriously, though, like, I, I know that there's still people who this is news to, so I want to just sort of lay the foundation to what you are getting into with this conversation. So YouTube's copyright and content ID system has been very flawed for a long time. Uh, there's a lot of people that are abusing this system, mostly claimants, false claimants who yeah. are tagging videos uh, incorrectly, or sorry, uh, they're, they're making claims on videos, they're flagging videos, taking videos down, uh, oftentimes without really any legal recourse for doing so, and they mm -hmm. just are basically abusing a flawed system. Uh, that's been the case, and there have been some really horrifying stories coming out of the woodwork about that, too. Uh, most notably, Channel Awesome, for example, had a whole fiasco where they had their entire channel's monetization removed for what appeared to be, like, little to no reason, and at least they weren't given any reason or communicated with very much at all. And that's always been a problem with YouTube as well, is their lack of communication especially with Guilty people until proven innocent yeah That's what that, the, that of do. course too mm -hmm. one of the big issues uh see so yeah, a lack of communication a very broken copyright and content id system that really just puts the burden on creators 
to prove as rock or as nick mentioned they're guilty before be, or sorry they're guilty before innocent there's a phrase there but <laughs> the, bottom line, <laughs> the bottom line is that it's fucked up and creators are on the short end of the stick for the most part yeah good news today though a small step forward for creators everywhere youtube has announced improvements to the content id system for creators they got this little graphic up here as well i want to show you guys uh, just read verbatim here. We understand just how important revenue is to our creator community, and we've been listening closely to frustrations <laughs> about the loss of monetization during the content ID dispute process. Translated, we know y'all are losing money, and that shit sucks. But we're not. The fact that they've got... They've got to say, like, we understand you find money to be an important part of making a living. <laughs> exactly, like, yeah. come fucking on. <laughs> We understand this is your job, but... <laughs> we know you take this sort of seriously. Mm. Not like us, though. You enjoy food and living not in boxes. We understand just how important oxygen is to your everyday life. <laughs> and we've been listening closely to your concerns. <laughs> To address these concerns, we plan to roll out a new solution that will allow videos to earn revenue while a content ID claim is being disputed. So as Ryan likes to say, this is all very much inside baseball. And for the most part, if you're just a YouTube viewer or a Twitch viewer, this doesn't really impact you in any way. This is all about how creators are being treated by YouTube, how creators are being taken care of by YouTube. Well, it indirectly affects the viewer because if this shit continues to go on, you're going to see content more and more mm -hmm. afraid. They're going to people are more and more afraid to put up content because yeah. review, like just movie reviews and game reviews, are getting slapped with that shit. You're going to see people not yeah. able to do that, so it absolutely affects the viewer as well. I mean, it it does also with. Uh, I mean, there's certain channels I know, like what, like a month, a month and a half ago, that had to take down. I mean, this is this is a separate a separate issue here, but but they had to take down whole whole series off of their channel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Very specifically, as CD Baby, uh, it's a music aggregation God. service. They have a policy that basically, as soon as they acquire the rights to any kind of music at all, they put it into the content ID database, which means that if your Let's Play accidentally happens to have some soundtrack to a game in it, that finds its way to the CD Baby content ID match, uh, they will claim monetization on your videos. Doesn't matter how new or old it is, it's just what they do. Mm. And then it's on, uh, it's the burden of the YouTuber whose Let's Play got monetized, uh, taken away, monetization taken away, to contact the musician who made that OST for that game to then contact CD Baby to contact YouTube to then make an exception for it, which is <laughs> hilariously convoluted in every direction yeah. and not the way it should be. So, so what is the proposition, Bear, that they, they've finally come up with that we could have told them over two years ago? Well, yeah, okay, let's, let's, not, let's not immediately just throw them under the bus here, because they have, <laughs> no, I will. it's a concession <laughs> at least, you know? Like, I want to give them some credit for at least taking a small baby step forward. So here's what they're offering. Yeah. So the new system that's going to be integrated in a, over the next few months or so, first step, the video goes up on YouTube. I'm really glad they outlined this for us, by the way. This was the part that I was most unclear about, how videos actually really end up so. on YouTube. Uh, number <laughs> I two. they just show up yeah. randomly. <laughs> <laughs> like By the course. power of the in and out of existence. <laughs> but number two, the claim is placed. The third party claims the video through content ID. And the money is still immediately paid to that third party until the creator disputes the claim. Now, that part is important. Number three, the dispute process. If the creator believes the claim is invalid, which most of the time they end up being the case, unless you're shitty and just uploading clips of movies, in which case, you, this but, is not for you. Yeah. We're not talking not about right. you in this instance. You're not the, you're not the victim here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if the creator believes the claim is invalid, they may choose to dispute it. And this is the point at which mono, or, uh, you no longer are quote-unquote losing money, right? This is the part that YouTube is sort of fixing, where instead of just immediately allowing the third-party claimant to continue to gain the revenue from your video, instead now that revenue and that money is being funneled into just, like, the ether, I guess. It's being held in chamber. limbo, yeah. right? And until that dispute is settled, that money is not going to go to anybody. As soon as that dispute is settled and it's determined that either the claim was invalid or valid, then the money will go to the appropriate party. And this is a tremendous improvement over the system that preceded it that was yeah. broken Much to an unreasonable the degree. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> like, so we're can, I, can I highlight also again? A, a solution Sorry. that was been thrown out there mm -hmm. like a million yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah. It's I've heard extremely this solution. obvious. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. exactly. I want to highlight again just very quickly what the system was prior to this being amended. 
Uh, you would have a video, everything was great, you're getting monetization on it, someone out of nowhere decides to claim it for any reason that they choose, whether or not they have any actual valid monetization claim toward it. Uh, immediately after that claim takes place, all money is diverted to them until you can prove that they do not allow or do not have access to get that money. And that can go for up to 30 days without them acknowledging that you've disputed their claim. They have a month to decide right. whether or not, and this is the same person who put the claim on it, how now can decide if it's a valid claim or not. If so this it's sounds ridiculous, it's a conflict it's, yeah. of interest. Total bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So basically what you could have done is been anybody and just decided to put claims on all videos that you decided you wanted, get the money from them, and dissolve yourself back away into nothing. Yep. And people did that frequently mm. and collected yes. and there's tons no of punishment money from for it. Yep. That's the worst and, part. Yeah. There's no repercussions for the person collecting all of this money mm. that you, they have no claim to whatsoever. And so this know, at least puts it in a holding tank until we can decide. Someone, uh, Dave Guy in the chat asks as well, why wasn't this the system in the first place? There's, mm -hmm. there's Good question. <laughs> yeah. There's Good a, there's, question. Yeah, well, it, it, obviously this system makes a great deal more sense. But the reason that, that YouTube was the way that it was is because, you know, YouTube historically, uh, like since it first came out, was just getting sued left and right yeah. by, uh, by, by people. And basically once monetization happened, um, YouTube had this system where it put the burden of, the pr burden of pr proof on well, uh -oh. uh, instead of uh, the accuser, essentially. Um, and the reason for that is so that... Uh, they couldn't. They couldn't get sued. People just could freely just be like, "Okay, I'm claiming this," and and most people wouldn't wouldn't dispute it, and you know we wouldn't have to deal with this kind of kind of issue. This is a much more sensical. Uh, uh, you know, this this system makes a lot more sense now. Mm -hmm. But um, and, and I'm I'm curious to see what happens in this case now if there's going to be um, some sort of uh, lawsuits engaged or levied against YouTube due to this. Aren't they? Um, I, I imagine yeah, they're probably just perpetually being sued, right? Yeah, pretty much. L yeah. How large of an entity they are and how many goddamn gray areas of the law there are in, in re regards to what they do. There's gotta well, it's be... Just, it's, like a, it's a classic problem of, like, old law not meeting up to new technology standards. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. the old law wasn't written with what we do in mind. And that's why a lot of the problem, and if you... I don't know if you guys saw Channel Awesome's new video talking about the, the other steps that are being taken now... Because so many people made like went to this website, made like over a hundred thousand comments in thirty hours. There's going to be there's a guaranteed spot to talk about uh, these new laws or these old laws within like two congressional hearings over the next like couple of months or whatever. Oh, good. So they have to they have to talk about them now. Like that's something they have to be talked about. But that's the problem is these laws are so old that they couldn't even fathom what we were going to be doing mm. as something that it needs to take place. So these corporations are taking that weakness in the law and just bending us over backwards with it and slapping our asses until it's red and we, we just puke money. And like that is what they've been is doing to us for. I've been, I've been wondering. <laughs> I think, at least it does for that. Have you never yeah. seen content ID match bear? That's exactly oh, what that is. Yeah, okay, yeah, I've just been I disputing them. But just... I mean, the, the, it's, it really is boils down to the law needs to catch up or re, be redone. <clears throat> oh God, I'm sorry. I'm, I keep losing people here. <laughs> Whatever. Even without thinking oh about God, Let's Hold on, hold on, Mathis, like, please. What? Sorry, uh, this is entirely on me, but <laughs> like, it skipped your entire point on Skype. Like the, your 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 whole previous sentence, oh. and then like after that, you were immediately <laughs> like, "But here's right. the real thing." <laughs> so, so I need you. To, I need you to repeat that previous point if you could. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that was, what I was going to say is like, well, if your argument is, well, let's players steal content. I mean, like, but the, the thing is, even just like movie and game reviewers are getting hit with the same thing. Yeah. Where fair use is so obviously being put into place, but corporations don't give a shit. How many times do we see Angry Joe tweet out his review got taken yeah. down? Yeah. Because a clip he played out of like, a 30 second clip in a 40 minute video was monetized by nintendo or warner brothers or whoever decides they want to wring yeah. the money out of his video it's so fucking stupid and there's a, another element that i kind of failed to mention when i was describing this and that's that once that money went to whoever made that claim it went to it no matter what the dispute ended up as so even if you right. earned back the rights to your own video yeah. that you, you made, got the money 
Yeah. They already got the money in the most uh, uh, popular time for right. that video to generate any revenue. Yep. The first day is where like 85% of the revenue comes from. And if you lose it on the first day, that's going to be the end of that video. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's it's insane that they were allowed to take this to this level because it does not promote anyone to make content. I, I think maybe this is all just purely speculative, but maybe it, it sheds some light and plays a little bit of a devil's advocate role. I think just the, even maybe just the terminology associated with what we do sort of just undervalues the entirety of it as a medium, you know? Like, think about just, like, the idea of, I made a video. Like, every, anybody can make a video. A video is not really, like, as, as a thing, it doesn't hold a lot of weight, I guess, you know? Like, as opposed to mm -hmm. saying something like, I made a film, or I, 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 you know, I composed an album, or something like that, you know, like that? That has a lot more weight as a uh, as an artistic medium, but I guess now, like with videos, I don't know. It's just this. This is a well, weird argument to make. You're, but all you're trying same... to put a hundred subgenres of that concept, like investigative journalism, yeah. underneath the word video, which yeah. to yeah. people who don't know what you're saying sounds like you just made some which shit is, in five minutes. Yeah, exactly. Which is sort of media. the point. Which is right. You know, it's it's so confusing and. I, I mean, we know everything is antiquated. The laws that we are sort of being forced to abide by here that don't necessarily even relate to what we do all the time. And I don't know, maybe that part of it is just like a, the, the idea of YouTube in general. There's just still sort of a negative stigma there, maybe. Mm. Uh, perhaps. It just seems like nobody cares mostly, and yeah. the people that do care are the ones with all <laughs> yeah. the power to take what they want out of it. Mm -hmm. So right. for like YouTube this, to this... even make mention of it is surprising to me. Yeah. Well, there's a big fucking shitstorm that was being kicked up over all this recently because channels are getting hit, but I'm happy to see at least a step in the right direction yeah, that yep. does yeah. not immediately favor the corporations of shit like CD Baby just being like, yeah, my money. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the past couple of months, YouTube has been taking those baby. Oh my god. I'm so sorry, listeners. This is... I don't know what's happening today. I lost everybody there. Uh, like, ways <laughs> oh that my is, uh, god! I lost everyone oh, for like god. 15 seconds! What happened? <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> oh. oh. Okay. God. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure you made a terrific point there, Rob. I wish I could have heard it. <laughs> I was actually just mostly talking about like uh, bubblegum cigars and how they're great. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, no, that was, yeah, that's that was a staple of my childhood, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we gotta do something about this connection, man. We gotta do something yeah, about these bubblegum cigars. These companies yeah. are working <laughs> us over. They're painting our keisters red until money falls out my mouth. That's what's happening. Yep. <laughs> Bang it till you puke it. <laughs> Is that what they do in Honey Cam Studio? No, yeah. I just give them, I just give them cocaine until they give me money. <laughs> oh Jesus! It's like YouTube should work. Uh, this is this is this is a uh, yeah very positive thing though I think that that yes. we can all take away from yeah. it while it's still got a long way to go we are quite happy that steps are being taken and Rob I think maybe you were alluding to the fact that YouTube has been at least making progress toward not being so demonized by people the, the like us couple... for example yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> we might be well, too yeah. long those. The, the the past couple of months they've been doing some things that are that are you know are things that we have been asking for for years and years and years. Yeah. Um, so you know there's they're taking steps. They're kind of half-assing a lot of them, but it's better than nothing. You say half-assing, I assume like gigantic legal bureaucratic mess to yeah. even be able to get to this point of concession, right? I there has to just be like so much at play here to even be able to say, well, look, let's let's at least give them the chance to get the money back that they earned, which is silly. Oh, hello. Oh, we are. We're gone. For a good we, we, we lost. All right. Well, <laughs> never mind. <then. laughs> it's, it's my turn to have a point be destroyed. Fine. That's <laughs> that's acceptable. At least the, at least the stream heard it. That's yeah, that's what's important. Yeah, exactly. Like there's there's podcast evidence of it having happened. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, yeah. That's the YouTube copyright stuff. We're we're happy about it. To be sure, it is. Uh, it's encouraging. Yeah. Let's talk about Nintendo NX.
The new console coming from Nintendo, a uh, successor to the Wii U, which I should make mention of this. Uh, the Wii U uh, sadly has been Nintendo's worst performing home console to date. Uh, still, mm. still rocking that $300 price tag as well. There was a conversation on Reddit about this last week, but it is really interesting that they're, they're sticking with that, especially with a new console coming up so uh, soon here. Uh, but let's talk about that console. The Nintendo NX be launching globally in uh, March of 2017. We don't know a ton about it. The speculation at the moment uh, is that it's going to be some sort of mobile home console hybrid. And we mm. we haven't seen anything that's like uh, an all-in-one package meant to do that, but we have seen, you know, a lot of uh, the big three, for example. I, I think everybody but Microsoft has done... Well, that's a lot of people, right? That's two people. Uh, Sony, <laughs> Sony and Nintendo have gone the way of getting their mobile gaming systems and the home consoles that, you know, sort of talk to each other. Like the 3DS and the Wii and the Wii U as well as the Vita and the PSP, speaking with the PS3 and the PS4 and all that. So, you know, there's been synergies there, but no, nothing that's quite like uh, what is speculated to be some sort of hybrid that they're working out here. And uh, the other big news corresponding to this is that the, uh, the first release coming along with the NX is going to be a new Legend of Zelda game, which is not uh -huh. at all surprising if you have been uh, following Nintendo for the past, like, dozen years or so, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, this is Twilight Princess all over again, pretty right, much. Exactly. I assume they're going to release I got versions. yelled at by so many angry moms. <laughs> Why? Because <at> <laughs> we, we didn't have yeah. enough. We didn't have enough Zeldas when they came out, and I got, like, pen thrown at me at one point. Matt, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm was angry. Jeez. Um, I guess it's exciting. You the, sound the really NX, excited. <laughs> For me, for if the NX is going to be at all competitive, it has to be equal to or better than the PS4, yep. Xbox One technologically. Otherwise, I'm so sick of Nintendo just being behind the curve when it comes to just like technologically powerful consoles. All their consoles are like, well, we can't do you know as much as the other consoles, but we've got a really gimmicky controller. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I don't care. Like, I don't give me a give me well, a console. Well, where I can get my Nintendo exclusives that are going to look beautiful, and I can play them, and I'm happy. No more gimmicks. Stop with the gimmicks. Mm. See, I'm that's the it. thing, too, is that, like, it's the it's the gimmicky controllers, but the other thing that Nintendo always holds over everyone is that we have Nintendo games. You know, like, mm -hmm. hey, we have these exclusive Nintendo games. that Clearly that isn't play. working anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing, is that, like, if you look at, like, the Wii U's... I mean, I guess now that the NX has been announced, it kind of makes sense, but, like, the Wii U's release catalog for... For uh, 2016, when they released it back in, like, December or November, they have three games. Three <laughs> games that they're making. It's like, you're not even giving us Nintendo games on this console yeah. anymore. Like, what? what? They lost all the third-party support. Everybody got really fed up with it. And if you remember from the start of the Wii U existing, it always felt like, oh, just give them six more months. They'll, they'll ramp up the catalog yeah. and it'll pick up. Now we've gone through an entire console generation and they never did. Now, granted, I have more games for my Wii U than I do for my other two consoles, but that's purely because I'm, like, a PC gamer. If I didn't, I'm sure I would use my PS4 way more than my Wii U. Mm. But right. at, at, as well as, like, stop with the gimmicky shit because I'm sick of, like, having a controller that's too big for my hands or is a remote control wiggle-waggle thing, I'm ready for, like, the Nintendo games to start doing new things as well. Like, how many times are we going to play the same Zelda game with a new skin on it? How many times are we going to play this? Like, Mario, I'd say, is the only one that does a pretty good job at doing something new. New enough every time to be interesting for me to play. Because, I, I mean, you can only do so much with Mario. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to jump in, Mathis. I don't know if you're still talking. Game? Hold on. <laughs> I guess Sky is out. insisting that you don't oh, talk frozen. right now. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. I'll I want no. I do want to <laughs> say like you. You noted on the fact that we've we've seen so many Zeldas, right? Like I want to point out this is going to be the 18th Zelda game, 18th, mm -hmm. one eight, being the launch well. title for the Nintendo NX. And I know I'm probably not making any fans here saying stuff like this, but doesn't that seem like there's there's not a series that has yeah. been running since 1986. Right? Like, no other game series has had continual installments for 30 years. And yeah. I know they're all different. Like, obviously, they're not all the same sort of game. Like, that's, that, that's preposterous. But 
it is still it's how how long Very can similar. it go you know yeah exactly well i i will say the 18 that's like not in the main series like the main series on like the main nintendo what console i mean there's seven or let's, eight okay, nine let's, maybe let's list them right Let, let's uh, list like what would you consider the main nintendo or the uh, main zelda nope. games or did I lose you mm. again? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I didn't. I didn't hear the first part. You said consider the can main zone. Can I recall okay. us or something? Is there anything I can do to help? Yeah, we need to. It's, this is it's this cutting is out every. Yeah, I think we might do. Okay, that. we're gonna do technical difficulty stop. Hold on, real quick. All right. All right. Hi. Hey. So people are. I'm reading people in chat. It's like, well, if they change Zelda, I'm not gonna buy Zelda in the first place. Mm. I'm like, no one. But the problem is, no one's fucking buying Zelda now. And yeah. there's no no one's buying Nintendo now. So you may not buy Zelda, but it doesn't matter because Nintendo's going broke. They need to change something. I, I think I think I can maybe say, I don't know if this is true, that I might be the most Zelda fanny person in this call right now. Probably, is that maybe yeah. true? I've yeah. played all of them through completion except for the most Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword. Fucking trash. Yeah, me too. Actually, that's that's exactly the case for me I've too. Never but been I mean, Zelda guy. I love the series. Um, that said, I've played it forever. Uh, that said, yeah, they they do need to change. I think the series has gotten really really bland um, over time. And uh, and though to that point, <clears throat> uh, the new Zelda, the the way that they're describing it, it sounds like they are trying to change a lot of the things. Like they said that it's uh, completable in any order. You could go to any dungeon you want whenever you want to go to that it. It's like. Yeah, it's like it's like hugely nonlinear in that like there's there's going to be a, a, a much larger overworld where I also you hear the NPCs the will be voiced too, which is great. Right. Nice. There's going to be that too. There's going to be um, yeah. There's there's there's, uh, there's going to be a crafting system, which I mean, who knows whether that's going to be good or not. But but okay, but, but you know, think about that real quick. Of the four things you just listed, none of those are revolutionary. <laughs> those are all new to Zelda. Like yeah, right. That's true. Yeah, yeah. But but that's fine because a, a lot most other games don't get a lot of the the humor or quirkiness or that that same um, mix of things that Zelda does well. Mm -hmm. um, so adding extra things on top of that, I mean, that seems like it could be good. Maybe if it if it. I want to make my point good. again. Yes, that please. I got. Yeah, all right. So your premise was that Zelda has always had these ways of innovating by changing up the one thing for the next. It was basically the same formula, but I think the real formula here that nobody pays attention to is the fact that Zelda has consistently always been the same concept in whatever the newest skin of technology allows yes. it to be. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And that trend has not gone anywhere, despite whatever it seems like their innovation has been. Okay, now we've got a waggle controller. Now we've got a map on that tablet. It's still the same shit with the same, same concept game. behind it. The answer mm -hmm. here is Zelda needs to end. They need a new concept, mm -hmm. and they need to start something new. I'd be okay new. with Zelda ending, too. I really would. Uh, you I can't mean, iterate this long years. and have it be interesting. But, but, like, you're, hitting, you're, hitting on, you're hitting on a topic that I think a lot of Nintendo IPs need to, to just accept. Yeah. is like, just let it fucking go. You've people been doing die, this. so do franchises and stories. <laughs> let it like, go. People can say, but I want more Zelda, but the... You could say I want more Mario or I want more this, but look at this. Like you could just take look at the sales figures of the Wii U as just an example. I think people are getting a little exhausted of the same thing over and over and over again. And it's if just, you think we're pulling that out of our asses, by the way, I want to point out that the next story we have on the docket is Sony's PlayStation Network made more money last year than the whole of Nintendo. PSN <laughs> made more than <laughs> Nintendo. It's crazy. Um, they need to. It's time for new IPs to come out of Nintendo. Uh, let Zelda go. Mario's, I'm, you know what? Fuck it. I will still buy Mario games because I just find them fun. But for the most part, most Nintendo, like, I, I'm ready for them. Like, let Star Fox fucking die at this point. Like, they please just let it die. They, made yeah, it. Yeah, they, their best foot they, they did bring it behind it, the shed. Yeah, They and, definitely and... killed it because what did they do? They made, they remade an old game. What did they do? They didn't let go of the past, they remade an old game and implemented waggle controlling. That <laughs> made was their a, new I love fucking. that we're calling it waggle controlling. That's good. <laughs> they made a tech demo for a system that they just announced they're retiring. Yeah. Yes. yeah. That's what they did with Star yeah. Fox. Pretty much, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I don't... Me personally, and I'm on record as being a harsh critic of Nintendo, um, 
I don't think they need to retire the series. I think they just need to have new IPs. Because in general, I mean, like, you, you look at the Wii U's catalog of games that they came out with, there just weren't that many. And and over the course of years now, like, like, like every Nintendo system has been less and less first-party IPs. And, and uh, on top of that, less and less new IPs, too. The reason... The reason the Wii was so successful is because of the way they marketed it. I mean, they were in the hole from the game. They were in the hole prior to the Wii for the same reason the Wii U is putting them in the hole now. They have very little third-party support on the GameCube. It was very much just a first-party driven thing, and it was it was putting them into into a problem place. The Wii came about, and it was marketed as a toy, and it was available for everybody to play. It was like kids, adults. There was, I mean, if you worked at GameStop, Nick, how much trash? Third-party Wii games were ninety-five percent trash. It was and ridiculous. The accessory oh, section yeah. was all trash. Most of the shit people wanted yep. to pre-order was trash. It, it was, was all shovelware. trash. That's was the Wii was a shovelware console, but it was marketed as a toy, and because of that, it sold incredibly well and pulled them out of the ditch. Then with the Wii U, we're having the same problem the GameCube had, maybe even worse than the GameCube had, with no third-party support because the, the specs just aren't up to snuff to the two best-selling consoles out there right now, that nobody wants to implement a touchscreen like motion control controller to their games. Right. It's just they, they try so hard to, to innovate to the detriment of their own console that it puts them in the hole, and nobody wants to buy their fucking console. The yeah. Wii was the beginning of the end for Nintendo considering video games an art form, and it was the beginning of them considering them properly a toy. And they've yes. kept that same mentality from that point forward with their artistry and the way that they put effort into what they make now. And it's incredibly obvious to me that that's what they, they've done. They went too hard on hitting demographics and not hard enough on making good games, which is what should be the focus of a game developer. Because, I mean, I think... <clears throat> I think more than even Sony or Microsoft, Nintendo, when you think of Nintendo, you think of Nintendo games, right? Like, when you think of Xbox, you think of PS4, you think about all the games that you could play on those consoles, but you don't think of, like, games made by Microsoft. You don't think of games made by Sony. And for Nintendo, I mean, they, they really are, in my eyes at least, first and foremost, the developer of Nintendo games. And they also have consoles, and that's what you use to play those games on. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yep. they, they focus too much on the other stuff and not enough on making the games good. You know? Yep. I, it, it, that said, there, there are some standouts on the Wii U even and the Wii yeah. as good Nintendo mm -hmm. games. But I mean, that, even, even some good third-party-ish games. Like Bayonetta 2's on the Wii U, which is yeah. an awesome game. Yeah. Pokémon Tournament, that's ah, a Nintendo game, but it's a great game, though. Mm-hmm. Pokemon yeah, Tournament. Right. Pokemon Tournament. Actually, let's go to bat for Nintendo for a second here. Pokemon Tournament, I think, is like you know, sort of their yeah. new IP that might uh, be sort of a refreshing stance for them. I like. I like where they're going there. Yeah, that's refreshing. Cool. A Pokemon fighting game. <laughs> In the comparative uh, hey. sense, I guess, right? You know, <laughs> look, the, their best aspiration is to mash up stuff they've already done. That's as good as it's getting for them, and they really don't give a shit beyond that. You're kind of right. Yeah. Well, well, they've put them. Well, they they put themselves in a situation where they have to fix themselves now. Otherwise, they are fucked. Yeah, they they've never really. Okay, this is a that's a broad generalization, so I won't even finish the thought. But <laughs> you know, like for for recent history, Nintendo has always been kind of player three, right? Sony and Microsoft, uh, or Sony especially now, mm. and at this point, Sony is just dominating, and Microsoft is definitely second place. Nintendo's yeah. bringing up the rear. But Nintendo has tried to position themselves outside of that race where they go, well, there's players one and two, but we're also player one over here. We're just not part of their <laughs> shit. They're we're playing a different one. game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds well, like that, me. I mean, that's largely Nintendo's problem, though, right? Is that they, they just don't listen to people. Like, they don't... <laughs> They don't listen to the people being like, hey, they mostly listen we want... to aliens. <laughs> yeah, well, no. no, but I mean, like, you know, like people for years go to Nintendo and they're like, hey, we really want X, Y, and Z. Give us that. And then Nintendo's like, well, that sounds good, but we're going to give you uh, Zelda. an Ubot instead. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait, there was a recent quote, or somewhat recent, about why people didn't get, like, a Star Fox game that they wanted to get before. And Miyamoto was basically, well, we can't think of enough new things to do with the game right. and the way it's supposed to be played. And that's why we never got one until, like, the design decision to use the 
big fat Wii U controller as a cockpit mandatory to use yeah. for most of the game <laughs> was implemented into the game. That's when he decided, oh, you know what? We can Wait. make Star Fox. <laughs> Not only can we make Star Fox with the new controller, but we can make Star Fox 64 all over again, <laughs> but this time with motion controllers. Well, mm. it, it, actually, I, me and Nick were watching some, some of the Star Fox Zero last night, and it, it wasn't even that they remade Star Fox 64. It's that they remade Star Fox 64, but they took all of the worst parts of Star Fox 64 and made that the majority of the game. And it's just, it's, yeah. it's mind-boggling. What, it's are the, what are the worst parts of Star Fox 64, out of curiosity? Everything but R-Wing. Yeah, when you're not in all <laughs> Like, that's the, anything, anytime you're not an R-Wing is the worst part of Star Fox 64. <laughs> that is the majority of the fucking game. But you get a chicken walker. Yeah, which you have to use all the time, it looks like, by the way. <laughs> For real, game. like, it looks like the majority of the game is not Star Fox game. It is yeah. some other thing. It's funny, too, because, like, we, we, we were watching, uh, we were watching uh, Alaskan Savage, and uh, he was he was playing it, um, and we watched him at the start of the game, and I remember hearing these terrible reviews about Star Fox Zero, and he was playing it from the beginning, and I was watching it, and I was like, this looks pretty good. I mean, yeah, it's not innovative, but I'm okay with that. Like, I like Star Fox 64, remake it, I'm cool with that. And it's like, this looks, this looks pretty good. I wonder why these reviews are so bad. And then all of a sudden, you're in the fucking shitty chicken walker. And it controls the exact same as the ground on the on the Star Fox Assault, which everyone universally hated. And then, like, for... just, and then just for, for, like keep going mission to mission. Oh, now you got a helicopter, and you can use this yeah. tiny robot that you can control with the gamepad. And remember all that fun stuff that you do in the R wing, where you're shooting big spaceships and you're blowing up all this shit. Well, we know that you don't really like that. What you really want to do is you want to drop this little robot out of your helicopter and click. Button. You just, Isn't it cute though? He looks like Rob. <laughs> it's just like, Rob's incredibly oh. passionate about Star Fox. I it's, really am. It's just very just interesting just... to see Savage, yeah. who's a very cheerful guy. He he just started to get like a little bit like he was crumbling inside uh, yeah. by like the second mission, and then he started saying like, "Man, I just want to go in space and blow up stuff and do Star Fox things." And, and that and... exact line says everything. Yeah. I just want to play Star Fox, not this. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, it that was the sounds like we're we're shitting all over Nintendo, but yeah. the, problem, it, the reason we're doing it is because like we grew we all grew up with Nintendo, man. Like Nintendo was a lot of our like in, initiation to the video gaming world. And they did such cool things. They were the front runners for the longest time, and over the past fifteen years, twenty years, or whatever uh, since GameCube, really, and then after that, Wii, they've just refused to evolve with the gaming community. And like like they said, they don't want to give gamers what they want. They want to give gamers what they think they want with these weird innovative control schemes or not really Star Fox, but kind of Star Fox. And it just just give us what we fucking want. Just give us they're, the game. They're leveraging want. all the things we love to sell us things we don't want and then make it okay in their heads. That's how they justify it because they should feel guilty wanna, by it. Okay, no, hold on a second. I don't want to make him the villain. Let's not do that. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, the words I've spoken have indicated no, such. I, 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 no, no, that's that's <laughs> fine. But I I want to say like you know like you said, Math is like they have basically determined that they need to innovate or they're gonna die. And I think that is like well, we see a lot of the negative side of that where it just doesn't seem like they're up to speed or it just seems like everyone's blowing past them and they're just left uh, ignorant and oblivious to whatever the hell is going on in the industry, right? I feel like they're just sort of employing that we need to innovate approach still. Like they're still doing that, yeah. and I believe that's like, the problem. No, that I think that's sort of like what they have to do. They can't I, really I give disagree. directly no, with give, Sony and Microsoft, dude. Get, no, give me a console that's as powerful or more powerful than the PS4 and make me a fucking Metroid game on that shit. Make me a Mario game on that shit. Give me new IPs on that, or new first-party Nintendo games on that that look and play as well as the other ones do. No more of this. Star Fox, Star Fox for the Wii U, let's be honest, it doesn't look that great either. Yeah, like, it's pretty ugly. It's, I, I'm, I've been saying for the longest time... Nintendo, please make a console that's as powerful as your competitors so you get the third-party support you so fucking desperately need and your games can look as good or at better than your enemies because we can see what Nintendo can your do. Enemies. <laughs> your enemies. Sorry. Well, they're the war. villain. You like, got to get it straight. 
we can see what they can do with underpowered consoles. Like, look how beautiful the Mario game was on the Wii when compared to like the 360s specs or the Mario games on the the Wii U. Like, with we can see what they can do with consoles that are not as powerful. I want to see what they can do with consoles that are as powerful. That's mm. what I want. No more, no more innovative uh, innovation. Just come to the freaking lines with something just as good. I mean, stubborn and they're lazy and they don't want to actually oh, take it seriously. On, no, don't yeah. say they're okay. stubborn no, that's and true. lazy. That's just they are absolutely I... both of those things. <laughs> I will be, I will be middle of the pack here. I think that Nintendo needs to innovate, but I don't think Nintendo needs to innovate with the way that they've been quote-unquote innovating, which is trying to push motion controls and these stupid, like, alternate control schemes yeah, down our I throat. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm done like, with that, Sean. Y- you, know, you know what's a good example of innovation in gaming, and it's something that Nintendo did, and, uh, it, I mean, it was a long time ago now. Heartbeat but, sensor. But, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Fucking Integrated waste camp. <laughs> <laughs> Pikmin 1 was a great like like genre bending game yeah. that was ju- that was just like wow this is a new IP from Nintendo uh okay I'll, I'll try it out like wow this doesn't really play like anything I've ever played before mm-hmm. oh also this is a lot of fun like there's a lot uh, this this is a, kind of a new weird mixed RTS live action you know <laughs> uh, third person uh controlled thing yeah. where you can lose the game Very as well. Very difficult to I mean, apply genres to Pikmin oh. now that you've just tried to do it, I'm realizing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was it's, like an it's, RTS. It's, yeah. yeah, it was an RTS. Well, but, but, it's not, but it's not exactly an RTS because it doesn't really play like yeah, one. I feel like it's more like an puzzle. action game than an RTS, honestly. Yeah, it's it's a it's a genre bender. Like, it's, it's not... Mario ex- Galaxy did a great job of innovating the platformer with these, like, weird little planetoids. Each level was kind of like these micro gimmicks i guess but it worked it worked it was gimmicks in a good way mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. level felt the same like that's another way that they kind of went in the right direction exactly and that that in in both of those scenarios where is the innovation Platoon in the too. i'll give splatoon design. i'll give yeah. splatoon like the heads up like splatoon chat says splatoon mm-hmm. agreed that's yeah. one game on the wii u out of countless those games are beloved because they innovated in the game design. How many games in Nintendo's history can you look back on and thought, man, you know what really made that game great? How I had to shake my fucking arm back and forth to <laughs> swim. Yeah. I really like pretending I'm in the cockpit of my Star Fox <laughs> ship. Exactly. We say, okay, we say that while we're happy to wear our fucking HTC Vive and Oculus and do the exact same different. thing, right? Yo, yeah. give me Star Fox and an HTC Vive, yeah. and it'll probably work a yeah, thousand times better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Play. So, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> I want to say why I think Nintendo are stubborn and lazy because people in chat are just saying I'm an idiot and don't know what I'm talking about. What I mean specifically, or one example of this, is their failure to adapt to the online generation becoming a thing. The fact that they can watch things like their eShop come to exist and not support them properly. Oh, yeah. They can watch people in every other genre of gaming be able to matchmake and connect to each other make friends lists easily and seamlessly, and they just go, here's a bunch of fucking numbers. That's lazy. They don't want to adapt to the people around them. And it's stubborn. They don't have to do it this way. (laughs) It's not the way that it would have pushed them forward to success. I didn't didn't even think about that. Like, the online play for most of their games are non-existent. It's it's non-existent, and yet they court that exact type of person. It's yeah. ignorant and it's ridiculous that they don't understand what they're trying to do to the extent that they're sabotaging themselves like this. It's easy to put All on... they need to do is make good games. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's That's, easy to put yeah. on the rose tinted glasses too as you know nostalgia wise. Like Math has said, we we all grew up with these guys. We we know we know Mario and Zelda, right? Like that's that's the selling point is we know them. But we, we, this is not a new argument. We make these concessions to Nintendo we have continuously for years. Most of yep. the time when you're talking about consoles, you have, like, if, say you're talking to somebody who's interested in picking up a console and they've never bought one before. You're going to talk about you're going to talk about the PS4 and the Xbox One for for the most part you're going to discuss the technical specifications, the differences between the two, the games that are on them and all that stuff. But the Wii U you always just sort of have to be like now the Wii U is not going to be as powerful, it's not going to be as good of a console more or less, but here's <laughs> why it's okay. And that's not yeah. new to the Wii U. We had to say that about the Wii. As Mathis said, we have to talk about the GameCube that way unfortunately, even though I really like the GameCube as a console honestly, but still like, it keeps happening. 
This is yeah. Nintendo in a nutshell. It and is. they defend it and say it's what makes us unique. No, it's what's making you fail. And now you're going <laughs> to go into the mobile poor. genre. And yeah. now you're going to become a mobile whore. And that's where your future is going to be. <laughs> God. Can we so it's going to happen. Just take a little bit and just revel in the fact that the way they announced the Nintendo NX was a tweet. Not even Did that. Really? It was in like a fucking release to their investors, man. Like that's how people yeah. found out. They they parsed through the annual report or whatever the fuck it was, and it was like, oh yeah, and the Nintendo and NX is coming out in 2017. Oh, I'd like to oh. know that as a consumer. That'd be nice. <laughs> Uh, and now I'm pretty sure the tweet is only in Japanese too, so we had to rely on like an English English translation of it. But still, like, yeah, please tell us this stuff. We'd love to know. They're well, not... hey, you know, sorry, sorry go on. Well, I was just gonna say they're also not going to be at E3, and uh, that almost guarantees that the way that the NX is going to be announced is through a Nintendo Direct, which yeah. to me just says we're not interested in gaining a new audience. We just want to sell to the people we already have. Yeah. Right. Which is which is uh, dwindling. Yeah. Which is a dwindling audience. <laughs> my, um, my fingers, my toes, my dick is all crossed <laughs> that they're going to have, <laughs> like, they're going to come out with, like, the Nintendo NX, and here's, like, third-party yeah. support yeah. out our ass. Sure, if, sure. if I, man, <laughs> it's I, like, I'm not sure. confident it's going to happen, Nick. <laughs> I... Like I said, my dick is crossed. You, That's how you open sound, I am. You sound like me five years ago talking about Half Life Three. Like that, just they. Like, I, <laughs> I want it Think so much. Think about all the goodwill that they believe they have that they are now actively eroding by saying, "Actually, we, you owners that bet on us from the beginning, you're not getting a Zelda this generation. You're right. going to buy another system because we decided you get to wait." They more. have a Wii no. U and an NX version of that new Zelda. No, I realize, but, but you think they're yeah. going to buy it for the old system yeah. when there's a better version? No, they're going to buy another Nintendo console and mm -hmm. probably another. Nintendo handheld to go in parallel with that new console. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, that, I don't want that's... another 3DS. I have all of them. I'm done buying 3DS. <laughs> the newer 3DS. The, new, the newest 3DS. I think newest. Was... Imagine, though, imagine a return to grace for Nintendo. I would love you, it. It, it. Like, what if this next console has no gimmick? Yes. It's just, let's talk it about has, that. It's a box. Yeah. It has a controller. It's... You play games on it. High well, five. I'm in. <laughs> It's oh, technically no, like the 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 components of it are competitive with those of the current front runners in other console generations. Yeah. Oh my god. Like Can you, you plug it into your TV and Wait it like minute, would play the game. I would be ten years guys old again. To remember to think about a Nintendo console with a regular controller. No. <laughs> you must yeah. play what plays you, games on How HD dare TV. you? How <laughs> dare is, you? If, there is if they a just took the Wii Pro controller, that's good enough. I'd be fine. That's an okay yeah. controller. It's if not terrible. I love the Pro controller. I use it for every game except Star Fox, which I won't buy I wanna, because I, I can't. Finish, I want to finish a, qu a quick thought I had, though, regarding uh, what I was saying about them having to innovate. Like, the the idea of a company like them, they they continue to try to push the innovation, but they're sort of... I don't want to say this necessarily, but they're kind of painting themselves into that corner. That's sort of what, what I was alluding to before. But with that yeah. in mind, you know, like when you're a company that sort of banks on innovating, that is going to be a double-edged sword, right? Because when you hit it out of the park like they did with the Wii, you know, like, well, you know, obviously we all have our opinions on the Wii, but speaking from a sense of the they made millions Business. and millions of dollars part of it, right. you know, like, yeah, they did pretty It took them out that. of the, the hole, and it made them relevant again, yeah, at least for a little while. Yeah, it brought them, like, they were, they were on top, man. Are you kidding me? Like, Nintendo dominated for, like, a year or two with the Wii. They were, they were yeah, absolutely... And they traded goodwill away for those sales. Yeah. That's yeah. what they did. Well, let's also think about, think about, like, because, again, think of the market that um, the Wii... We could go on about this forever, by the way. Yeah. But think about, the no Wii, yeah. <laughs> well, think about the market that the Wii... No one's saying Think about the market that the Wii ended up having, right? It was a huge range of ages from old to young, not necessarily gamers, because of the way it was marketed as a toy. So when the new console came out, when they decided to name it... Yeah. Why... Like, my, I remember talking about this when it happened, when it announced. Why the fuck would you name it the Wii U? Yeah. Because most people yeah. who aren't us are going to say, oh, that's just, well, I already have that. I already have a Wii. Yeah. I don't need right. a Wii U. That was my first, that was my first thought, if, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's just like a peripheral for the Wii. 
Yep. Yeah, like wh- like that's that was such too. a marketing misstep on that. Like, why not name it like the Super Wii or like something like to harken back to the old days or just a completely yeah. new name, which would have been great. Mm-hmm. But their marketing decision to go with Wii U, outside of just the, the core gamers, the people who've been with video games all their lives, I can imagine looked at that and was just like, I, well, I have a Wii at home. I don't need another Wii. Yeah. Like, and what? you can put two and two together and realize that there's got to be some massive mismanagement going on to put them that out of touch with the people that are actually buying their hardware. Yeah. Right? That's Let's not that's say the, the Xbox did a great job with the Xbox One, by the way. The yeah, but it can exist One. in a vacuum. We can yeah, talk yeah. about it separate from the other consoles, just in their own strategies. Yeah. And, and I, I want to make a point on what you said, too, is you said that it has a large range of ages between yeah, young and old. Uh, well, that that's true as well, but... Um, the thing with the Wii U uh, is, or the Wii, um, is that it, it didn't exactly have a large range. It had the young and the old. It didn't the really wrestlers. have the middle core gamers, mm. uh, sure. which is which is the majority. And that 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 was that's sort of kind of what happened with the Wii. And then of course those are the people who are going to know that the Wii U is a different console, which yeah. kind of doubly fucked them up. Is is that middle range that they didn't really hit as a demographic? Uh, they're the only people who are going to yeah. be paying attention to Nintendo, yeah. uh, like what they're doing console-wise. Because uh, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, it as a toy. No one like an old demographic. They they got this toy and they could play with it, and it, they could play with yeah. it with their grandkids. Yo, Why do they it, need a new one? They don't need. The keep in mind though, said, Rob, the young do become the old eventually. So you got to keep that in mind. That's true. Yeah, but here we are. That's, I, that's yeah. another thing though that I that I was going to bring up. Is that there's an entire you know you realize there's an entire generation of people who have only lived on the Wii and Wii U. Don't, uh, I don't like don't remind that, me. Don't that, say that. That's, <laughs> that is their experience with the Nintendo, which is which is another which is another thing, man. That 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 like with if the NX is a traditional console, how is that going to play with the demographics that they've been shooting for for? You know, the past 15 years. You don't even know what demographics they're shooting for. They're a company that's completely driven on analytic information that can't even put together the results of their analytics to sell a console based on a proper name. They don't know what they're doing. (laughs) Like, they could have done something as simple as do what the PlayStation does. They call it the Wii 2. And it would have made more sense. We too is the better Wii. than we you. Uh, I'll say that. Literally any word. Any (laughs) word. Any word. (laughs) We couch. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, like the Wii and a number after it. Like fucking just do something other than <laughs> like. Blue. All right, all right, all right. Hold, hold on, I gotta Fair. let's 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 rein it in. Finally, let's rein it in. I'm sorry. Nintendo, the new, I gotta uh, take control. Nintendo, the weird controller company. Let's call them their, the new Mad Cats. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Basically. All right, all right, all right. Well, yeah, let's move on. Let's fuck, say, fuck. I mean, to close this uh, way too long conversation on the Nintendo NX, I will say that, like, this is this is a discussion purely bred out of passion. <laughs> we want you guys to know that, like, we, we all, for the most part, we want Nintendo to win, but they're just not doing it. And we're trying so hard. We're yelling at them. We're saying, please. These are the things we want. And then Miyamoto goes, no, you don't. You want this instead. <laughs> I'm critical of Nintendo out of love. That is my childhood yeah. Nintendo. Yeah. You know? So I was critical out of we love, hope... and now I think I'm just tired of their shit. Yeah. <laughs> we, we hope my other... that you, you see that as we're not just trying to shit down their throats. This is, this is bread of passion. Well, my other childhood console... Company now just produces shitty Sonic games, so all I've got left is the <laughs> Nintendo. <laughs> They've got Genesis a good Twitter dead. account too. I mean, if you count that for what it's worth, it doesn't but... make their games any good. Yeah, no. I, I want to yeah. get to a place where people can hear what we're saying and look at it semi-objectively and yeah, go, "Wait, man. do the words that they just said make actual sense?" Let's mm. think about this realistically, yeah. and if you can come to that conclusion. I feel like we'll be on fairly level ground. I just, just don't yeah. seem to be able to do that. I, I do what I can to make an appeal to reason because I know I know how it feels, man. Like I'm trying to like I'm talking to you, the the person right now getting mad at all the things we're saying. I promise. Like we're we're with you. We're trying. Yeah. <laughs> but it's getting harder to be on their side. It really is. It really is. Getting. It's it's gotten. Yeah. It is it is here. Like I'm still with Nintendo. Like I want I want this new Zelda game to be good, but man. I swear, if it's not... Oh, the NX no. is going to be a put-up-or-shut-up moment for them, I think. I think so. No. Yeah. yeah, probably. 
<laughs> Nick, Nick's you already told scored, him to shut up. <laughs> you get scored by someone long enough, eventually you just need to sort of put them out of your life to You're some right. extent. And yeah, I've still yeah. got to be aware of what they're doing, but I'm not going to take it so seriously anymore yeah. because, man, I've had a lot of frustration with them. Fair enough. That's true. All right, yeah. let's let's get out of here. Let's, let's fucking duck out. Let's talk about a game I really enjoyed, actually. I want to talk about uh, Hitman Episode 2, Sapienza. I haven't played it yet. All right, Mathis hasn't played it yet. I'll probably just do more, the majority of it myself. Uh, Is it as long as the first one? It's longer, in fact. Thank God. I have a lot of very positive things to say about Sapienza. I'll, uh, I'll start off. So if you're not aware, uh, the new Hitman game is being released episodically. The first episode was Paris, which came out last month, which was pretty damn good. I actually really enjoyed the Paris level as well. Uh, but the newest one is Sapienza, which is in Italy. Uh, it tasks you with just uh, taking out a couple of people. The story doesn't really matter that much. Uh, but what's... Most, uh, what struck me the most, uh, first of all, for Sapienza was the fact that it is just huge. It's a massive level. It's awesome. It's much, much bigger than the Paris level was. There's an entire little town area that you can explore. It's on the coast. It's all gorgeous. It's, it's so good looking. Oh my god. I'm so happy games look so good, man. It's the most exciting mm -hmm. thing for me now. It's like all these games coming out look just awesome. And, uh, Sapienza is no different. Uh, the gameplay is just classic hit man nothing really changes gameplay wise between episode one and episode two i'm sure you weren't expecting it to but the the core gameplay is still solid as ever the um the actual objectives in sapienza are really interesting as well i i love that uh they've sort of not to spoil anything but they sort of taken it so they present you with your mission ahead of time and then often when you're going through the mission things can kind of change you'll get you'll gather more intel and you'll start to put together like alternatives for how to go about things you know like instead of killing somebody for example maybe you want to talk to them and start to use them to your advantage or something like that so there's a lot of open doors there's a lot of different ways to approach things there's like the handhold uh on rail sort of stuff for example, like where you start off in the main area and then it guides you over to this certain portion. And it's like, hey, this is weird. Maybe you should go check this out, right? But there's nothing that is forcing you to go down that route. It's all completely open and just, you know, so much is happening at once that it just feels like a big, vivid, life-filled place. It's really cool. I think it's one of the better Hitman games I've ever played. Uh, really just enjoying the hell out of it. Big thumbs up. I dig it. Questions, concerns, mm -hmm. comments? I'm excited How to play it. Hitman game different from the others in the series? Mm hmm. Good question. I have played Blood Money a bit. I've played, uh, what was the newest one that people didn't like so much? Absolution? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think mm -hmm. it was. Absolutely. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hitman, absolutely. Uh, it doesn't differ too much gameplay wise. I think, uh, for the most part, the core Hitman stuff is still there. You know, like you've got a good selection of gadgets to use. You've got, your, of course, your fiber wires back, you got coins. Uh, mines, good selection of guns, lockpicks, uh, there's like, yeah, there's not, there's not a ton that, that uh, separates it gameplay-wise from things like Blood Money, and, uh, it's, it's for the best, I think, you know? It, it, it takes a lot of what makes Hitman good, and unlike Star Fox, I guess, maybe just keeps the better parts <laughs> of it and it expands on those. Uh, not, let's, let's bring back the shitting on Nintendo <laughs> conversation, I guess, right now. Uh, yeah, it's, a uh, it's pretty solid. Oh. I, I think I, I honestly I never really played the Hitman series mm. uh, so much, but I like that they're going for this kind of episodic or or, or even even lower than like AAA retail price um, mm -hmm. uh, approach with the Hitman thing because like that that's what Hitman I think has always been. I've, I've played like I said I haven't played a lot of it. I've played a couple of the games here and there, but. Uh, to me, Hitman has always been just kind of like a collection of levels that you approach killing your target in a yeah. somewhat emergent way. Yeah. You know? And so, like, yeah, episodic totally makes sense. Yeah. Like, just, just give me a couple more levels that I can go fuck around in and kill this guy in a bunch of different ways, mm -hmm. you know? It absolutely works, too. I think Sapienza in particular is very replayable. I've already played it three times, which should probably speak volumes of it. Uh, I, I just kept wanting to go back and try all the other different ways to... Uh, approach situations but yeah you're right i think the way they're doing it here uh, just makes a lot of sense i know episodic releases are just sort of a you know negative stigma for a lot of people and just it leaves a bad taste in your mouth but i really do believe it works in this instance i think i think maybe like the individual episode episode price tag is a little high 
because you're looking at spending mm-hmm. ten dollars on Sapienza if you're just buying it independently of like the game package or the complete experience is what they're calling it. Uh, but mm-hmm. I mean, if there's only six missions that end up coming out at ten bucks a pop, and you're looking at a sixty dollar game, I mean, I guess if you wanted to divide it down that way, it would make sense. But Sapienza as just its own contained thing, I think is. Maybe not worth, I don't know, it's, it's hard to really make that discernation of what's worth $10 or not. But uh, I think the bottom right. line is I, I really enjoyed it. And if you're a Hitman fan, I think you're really going to enjoy it too. I'll definitely check it out. Episode one for me was a little on the short side. The episode, mm-hmm. Maybe it took me like 45 minutes to get to the level. The level was big and there were a lot of different ways to go about it. But uh, it, the most optimal way was kind of the, the quick and dirty. Like yeah. just go in, find a place to hide maybe to get disguised by one like one dude and just like take out your two targets pretty quietly and, qu- and quickly and then leave uh but i'll definitely check out episode two i enjoyed episode one well enough to see where episode two was gonna go but uh we'll see yeah i yeah i can definitely see where you're coming from on paris as well and paris for me like i i think you and i probably had a similar experience with paris just because i got in there and i sort of just like found out what was going on i i could like appreciate the big building and all the stuff that was going on, but it never really captivated me. But I'm not right. feeling like that with Sapienza. Actually, like as soon as Sapienza started up, I was immediately like, oh, shit, this is cool. Good. I want to go right. see what's going on over here and all that kind of stuff. So a uh, mm-hmm. little bit better there, I guess, from episode one to episode two. Uh, good, 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 good. There we go. Sweet. Sweet. Hitman yeah. episode Sweet. two out right Sweet. now. Uh, full experience available to purchase. Episode two costs 10 bucks. Uh, I think episode one costs 10 bucks as well. Let me let me go verify that real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick, right there, right there. there. Yep, yep. One hundred emoji, one hundred. Oh, I don't know if you can actually buy it separately anymore. Huh. Mm. All right. Anyway, uh, (laughs) Nick, let's talk about uh, Night Squad real quick. Uh, Sure. Mm -hmm. It's a game I played at PAX, and uh, that was quite fun. It's a party game meant for up to eight players. Has online or local, or any combination of the two. Uh, basic premise is there's a ton of game modes, uh, function sort of like a top-down, almost gauntlet-like thing, uh, very fast-paced, frenzied action. Uh, imagine playing soccer or uh, doing a capture the flag type thing as a bunch of colored knights on two different teams or free-for-all uh, and basically just going nuts. Just, I mean, it's not a deep game. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. It's just got a lot of little things to do in it. And uh, we did it for an hour on the No One LSS the other day, and we went through, like, what was it, about nine different game modes. And almost all of them were really fun. I think there was maybe two we didn't like. Uh, and I'm imagining we're going to go back to this for a good while. So uh, is it, Rob got to play it a little bit. Is it kind of like yeah. a WarriorWare cycling of games here, or what are we looking at? No, they're not that esoteric, to be honest. It's uh, You've got, let's see if we can remember, the, the typical stuff, deathmatch, team deathmatch. There's capture the chalice, which is basically just capture the flag. Uh, except there's only one chalice, whereas there's also capture the flag, which has two flags, which you got to bring from your base or the other base to your base. There's like a domination style one with points on the map you've got to control. Uh, there's one with crystals that I don't remember exactly what it was. Uh, there's a soccer game, like I said, and maybe three others, something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it, at its heart, it's a lot of just like try and slash the opponents, grab power ups, do crazy stuff like that, and and accomplish whatever the objective is. With scalable, you know, a minute length or score length, whatever you want to play to, and the online works perfectly, and the Big game modes are point. fun, mm-hmm. and that's all it really needs to be good. <laughs> yeah, yep. it's fun. It's a good time. Cool. There we it's go. It's a simple game. It's like duck game. You'll play it for a long time. Nice. Night yep. Squad. It's available now. Came out. At, oh, it came out in uh, November. Cool. Uh, Fifteen bucks. Night Squad. And, really? uh, it came out in November? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I was surprised really. by that too. Yeah, it's yeah. been a while, actually. Mm-hmm. I just never heard of it then. There you go. Wow. Uh, another one Nick played, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, a.k.a. Mirror's Edge 2, right? That's the one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Am I the only how- one that played it? Yeah, yeah. how is it? Uh, please tell me it's good. I am really curious. Yeah, I want to <laughs> hear No, it. Nick, no. <laughs> don't tell no, me no, Nick, don't tell me you're supposed tell to me do. Lie to me! Lie to me! I feel so bad that I have to take this position no. after how flamed up I got with the whole Nintendo it's thing. It's alright, man. You're being honest. Look, man, I don't want to just shit on it. It's not worth it, but it's just, it's not a great game, no. I don't think. It's just not incredible. 
Uh, I think it generally looks a little bit worse than the other one did. Really? The, oh, uh, no. the graphical what? aesthetic doesn't really hold up the same way no because way. it goes for an open world style game. Ugh. So they've got to sacrifice a bit of their artistic vision to have more, you know, stuff to jump and run on. Mm. Um, is he shouting right no. now? <laughs> <laughs> He's is that so mad? Upset. I really liked Mirror's Edge. I do, too, man. It's good. Continue. Sorry, going? I'm good. I got it out. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm trying to think of the best way to approach this. So they they bring you out of jail because uh, Faith went to jail for some reason uh, for being Spoiler. a resistant individual in her world. It's it's literally the first cutscene. Uh, <laughs> so she gets out of jail and she gets employed under this runner organization who uh, give her jobs essentially. And what you end up being is just sort of like this courier who has to run across buildings and get into combat scenarios with the uh, the bad imperialist Big whatever and soldiers yeah the the combat's definitely in there and it's pretty much forced uh and it's it's kind of clunky i didn't really like it, it. i would have preferred the to first just, one i yeah. would have just rather jumped past everybody because they kind of really emphasize that her character is supposed to be incredibly agile and uh there's skill trees now so you don't get all your abilities at the beginning you've got to earn them by doing missions uh, i'm gonna go play, play. <laughs> Oh, God. Something else. <laughs> you know, I like the RPG adding things into new game genres, but like sometimes, sometimes you gotta man. steal it back, man. Yeah. Like you can't just make me unlock everything. It's it, it's not always you can, fun. You can only run with your left foot until you <laughs> unlock <the> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Like, it's oh, not God. it's not god awful. It wasn't unplayable. It just wasn't that fun or interesting to me. It just felt a bit repetitive. And after about an hour of it, I felt like I kind of saw everything I needed to see. I hardly advanced the story at all because I kept taking these side missions that were there. And they basically just amounted to run to this position in under 20 seconds. So there were all these little time trial things interspersed. I mean, and then you'd run into a character and be like, here's a little dialogue thing or an audio log. Listen to this while you run to the next objective. <laughs> yeah. So, like, the story basically sounds like it's more or less the first game, right? You become a courier in this organization and you're running across rooftops delivering messages. I saw very little of the story, to be honest. It mm -hmm. really didn't advance much while I played it. It introduced you to about maybe three or four NPCs, all of which had very Matrix-y sounding fantasy silly names, which kind of turned me off a little bit, too. I don't know, maybe Geo just me, though. and Orpheus. <laughs> Did you say Gino? Yeah, Gio. Gino. Gio. Yeah. Gino is just an Italian yeah, name. Yeah, no, Gino. Even... You know that classic Matrix character, Gino. He, he served them all borscht before they went in. You know what? I'm going to go back and play. I'm going to play Dying Light. Because Dying Light does like that, you know, kind of parkour, but with good combat. Yeah. yeah. Mm. The parkour was fine, it seemed like, in this. I didn't have any problems with the parkour. It was just I wish I didn't have to fight people because it just didn't feel right. That is really well, that interesting the cool thing to about me. That... Edge. Yeah, exactly. Like, that was what I thought I thought was sort of the appeal was that it encouraged you to avoid combat for the most part in Mirror's yeah. Edge, right? And now it seems like it's forced. Yeah. Uh. They had these NPCs in, the like, the apartment complex that you start out in, and they're all just sort of lifelessly standing there looking at each other, and it's really awkward. <laughs> and then you'd run into these missions, and they're like, you have 22 seconds to deliver this vial. It's like, what world do you exist in where you have that short of a delivery time? <laughs> like, what is so fucking like, important? Well, I guess we're fucked, man. Like, in, in reality, that would I came be how that goes down. that block of 30 seconds <laughs> to pick up yeah, this yeah. money. Yeah. My frozen mac and cheese is almost done. I really need this vial right after. <laughs> 22 seconds or it's just pointless. I hit a bug that kept me stuck for about 20, maybe 20 minutes-ish that I really didn't understand what happened. And apparently I'd set a waypoint somewhere else in the city, but when I picked up this mission, it didn't replace my waypoint with the mission's waypoint. So I kept running after my own, thinking that's where I needed to go to deliver this vial. And it just wasn't. So I kept getting to the end of the waypoint and being like, all right, I ran out of time and died. Mm. Yeah. And then I wait through a loading screen, go back to the start, attempted it like 20 more times, and then finally realized, like, there is no ending to this mission. I need to somehow fix this. So I quit huh. the mission, joined That's... it again. It sunk, it sank properly, sunk, synced properly sank. to the waypoint, and then I was able to go. I, I breezed end. through, like, a, a preview video that somebody, some YouTuber did, and uh, there's a point where he's, like, fighting two guards, and he hits, he punches one of the guards, and the guard stumbles back into the other guard. And during his yeah. stumble back animation, he phases through the bars, 
and then just gets stuck on the other side of the bars, and the guard is like, I can't do anything. Because, like, his animation caused him to no clip with anything around him, and he just fades right. through the bars, and then the guard's just sitting there with his gun like, I can't shoot you. Yeah. I can't hit you. That's great. <laughs> I, I think it's a bit of a consequence of them going for a more open approach to the level design in this, that it's just not as interesting to move around. Because you're going to run into every iteration of how to traverse from point A to point B to point C to point A, right? Whereas in the other one, it was basically just a linear path from one end to the other of whatever the, the set piece was. Uh, yeah. So in this one, everything's going to feel a little yeah, bit yeah. more bland and a little less detailed because you have more freedom of movement, which should be a good thing for this character. However, it just ends up maybe not being... I, think I, I haven't played the end, the final version. Maybe it gets better, but the premise seems like it's going to be what it is. Is it is it fun to play? Like <laughs> I was bored you, of it really you were, quickly. You got bored pretty quick. I, I'm just like, and I finished all of Mirror's Edge and liked it pretty much. Yeah, so. I was going to say like I liked Mirror's Edge so much. I feel like I still want to play. Mirror's Edge was such a cool because, idea at the time. Yeah, I still want to play it just because I feel like I must enjoy this still to some degree. I feel play like Dying I still Light, will. man. Yeah, maybe I should. Did you, did you um, ever play yeah. Dying Light? No, nah, I didn't. It's good. I got code it's for it and good, everything, actually. man. Like that's how spoiled I am these days. Getting code for fucking no, dying light. And I still no, I know. I hear you, but like, it's got really good. In my opinion, it's got really good parkour with some pretty good melee combat. It's uh, it's solid. I liked it a lot. I played it all the way through. It was good. Mm -hmm. Quite pretty as well. Um, chat reminded yeah, me. There's actually a mission that you'll fail as part of the beginning. That like, if you don't kick everybody the right way, they oh, make you start over. No, what? Yeah, for real. Like you gotta uh, jump you gotta off learn these all the bars. Fucking kicks? Ugh. They make you they you flick the control stick as you hit them, and then it'll determine which direction they'll kick in. So you can use it to knock them into each other, like bowling pins. Yeah, but I don't want mm. to. No, I mean either. <laughs> it's just, That's not why I'm playing Mirror's Edge. The you tutorial, know, man. They uh, got to teach you how to kick properly. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna kick say, school. <laughs> you know, maybe get ready your pitchforks. But I wasn't that into the first Mirror's Edge. Like I didn't I, I didn't really like it that much. Um. And I will say, the fact that it's open world is kind of drawing me out and kind of being like, oh, you know, maybe, maybe I'll try it. You could have played the beta then. You could have gotten in and played it. Yeah, I know. I, I, I gave you is, the code. Is it over? Is it over? Yeah, All it right. was over like the day after I gave you the code. Oh, I didn't realize it was on such a time <laughs> Didn't it limit. get delayed recently? Did it? When is uh, probably? Probably. I think that's a safe that, assumption. I thought I read somewhere. Mid-May, I thought. It's coming out Initial June. release June 7th. Yeah, they got pushed June back 7th. a month. A whole month to fix all their problems. Good luck. <laughs> Get rid of that kick, yeah. kick tutorial, man. That's what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Mirror's Edge Catalyst coming out June 7th. Apparently it sucks. <laughs> That's a big bummer. <laughs> no, yeah. The tutorial didn't sell a lot of people. I know that much. Yeah. But let's, no, uh, they, they, I'm I, gonna... I think I'm going to play Dude, it. Honestly, I'm pretty sure I'm still going to play it. I played yeah. it well past the tutorial and into a bunch of missions. You can watch. I've got a VOD. I'll put it on YouTube if you I need will me to. I see that, yeah. I'll you can like see that. my first impressions for hours. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. All yeah. right. And uh, I believe... Oh, Dreadnought we want to touch, touch on real quick. Uh, Mathis, tell me all about Dreadnought. Well, so Dreadnought, for those who don't know, is a 5v5 kind of tactical class shooter is probably the easiest way to describe it, where... You choose a ship that can either be like a heavy damage dealer or a fast, like uh, maneuverable ship that does some decent damage, or a healer or a sniper support. And uh, I don't. I guess people say it's kind of like World of Warships. I never played World of Warships, but two teams of five, and uh, you're just fighting on this uh, random map, whatever map it ends up giving you. And the it's first to 100 points wins. Every kill gets you five points. Mm -hmm. Simple, simple concept. What I like about it, well, I played it for, I think, about three or four hours the other night, uh, is how strategic the game can end up becoming yeah. when you have a full team of five. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I haven't played it with less than a team of five. Only played with a full team of five. Um, and the amount of strategy that goes into every fight and, and positioning and the ship layout you end up picking for each, uh, for the team composition that you want, uh, and the slow... It's, it's a little slow pace. I, I hesitate to call it super slow pace because there's a lot of shit going on. But a lot of ships can take a lot of damage before they go down. And um, the repositioning of ships via the warp ability is really cool. Uh, I'm just enjoying it a lot. I know you've played it some, Bear, right? Yeah, I, I want to disclose ahead of this that I was uh, paid to do some shout casting for them at Prime of last year, I think. Yeah, Prime of last yeah, year. Yeah, you were at Prime just of last year. Yeah. FYI. 
Uh, I really like it as well. I think the, like you said, the strategy of it that becomes the like the focal point once you get two teams of five going up against each other is really exciting to watch too. Like it's a, it's a fun yeah. game to watch happen because there's all these massive Beautiful. ships. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It looks really good. Uh, that is really pretty. The yeah, just like the five on five combat, like the way that people were starting to work together by like day three of PAX where people were coming back to the booth and putting teams together and stuff. It was really cool to see the way that they got all just like there's not a ton of variation in the classes and in the in the uh, availability of guns and stuff. There's a, a decent amount, but it's not like that's not the selling point of the game is just the amount of different shit you can do. But it is yeah. it's actually just really cool just to see those limited selections work together so well and i think maybe the 3d space is what gives it so much uh yeah. so much interest as well is that positioning yourself behind mountains yeah. and like raising up yeah and down. Like every every part of the environment becomes interactable and becomes important to be aware of mm. so like I, I don't know if there's really a game that exists in this space that could compare to that but i think that's maybe one of dreadnought's big lures is that it has that complete freedom and range of motion to uh, explore maps and things. So that that alone is kind of a cool selling point. Yeah, I, one of the things I really enjoy about it too is how every ship does play pretty fucking differently. Like every ship you're gonna end up playing is gonna force you to play a very different way. A dr the Dreadnought class ship, for example, is super slow. Mm -hmm. It is a very slow ship, but it is a powerhouse. Getting hit by that thing will just tear your ship apart where on the complete flip side, there's the Corsair, which is really fast. You dip in and out, it's kind of, I want to call it a little bit of a counter to the Dreadnought because you're just zipping around yeah. the Dreadnought trying to do damage to it. Uh, I kind of found my calling in playing the healing class. I really enjoy that class. And they make healing fun. It's yeah, a lot do. of fun to play a healing class. Um, and you're kind of always sticking near the Dreadnought, maybe trying to hide in like little nooks and crannies of the map, shooting your healing beam at, at your uh, friend, trying not to get caught out because if they see you, you're kind of target number one. The healing class can sway fights completely. If somebody's trying to destroy a Dreadnought, but there's a, a healing ship, a tactical cruiser, they call it, uh, healing the Dreadnought, then it's going to be really hard for you to take that Dreadnought down. Uh, and then the Sniper, you stay super far back, and there's an ability called Siege Mode, which means you don't move, but all of a sudden yeah. your gun does a fuck ton of damage. Yeah. Uh, that's really fun as well. The, 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 they did a great job varying the different gameplay styles for each ship. I think the controls are excellent as well. I, this is yeah. maybe something that uh, wouldn't be uh, noted particularly, but I, I think one of the good or one of the tells of a good control scheme is that you don't really have to think about it while you're playing. Like it never comes to the forefront of your mind of, oh, what button is this? Like after a couple of games, you're for the most part know exactly where everything is. Yeah. So really well done there too. It's great. I don't want to, if Ryan were here, I'm sure he'd have a heyday with me being like, this is another great game I've been paid to play. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did not get paid to play and I like it yeah. a lot. I yeah. and I'm gonna say this too, having just said that, but I think it actually does have potential to be a big new esport too. Like this is a really fun game to watch, and uh, it is. It is. It's not so chaotic like Battleborn, for instance. I love Battleborn, mm -hmm. but it's too much shit going on on the screen to follow. Dreadnought is beautiful, but not so saturated and shit happening that you can follow what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I like it, and uh, I believe yeah, as you mentioned, coming out of that beta phase, and I. I think that's today, in fact, uh, or yesterday it was that uh, that's beginning. You can buy into it, I think. Mm -hmm. So there we go. It's just out now. Uh, no, I, it's the, like the closed beta. closed beta, and it was not open to the public until now, or something like that. Let me let me make sure I've got the right stuff here. Hold on. Uh, you can sign up for the beta right now on Graybox's website. So yeah, if you just Google Dreadnought, the beta. Or you up. can buy a Founders Pack and get access now. Mm -hmm. Right there, you go. Okay, cool. Uh, that's Dreadnought, and I believe that brings us into everybody's favorite segment. It's Ask Roundtable! Ask Roundtable is the weekly segment where you send in your questions to roundtableyt at gmail.com, and we do our best to answer them. This week's question comes from Chance, if I can get this to work right. Hold on. Uh, here we go. This week's question is from Chance, who asks, What games have you all played that you really enjoyed despite them having serious issues? If you hadn't had such an experience, how amazing would a game have to get before you could ignore major problems of this sort and have a great time? Thank you, Chance, for the question. Uh, Rob, you got something for this, don't you? I do, yeah. I mean, when, when, you, when you posed that to me before the show, I thought one right off the top. <laughs> well, don't, don't spoil Whoa. it, man. We vet oh, the sorry. questions first. Oh. 
<laughs> so, sorry, I, did, I didn't realize I was revealing, uh, you know, pulling, they pulling back the They don't understand the process. It's all magic. <laughs> it happens behind the scenes. <laughs> a Wizard of Oz. No. Um, no, yeah, I, uh, I, I th thought of one came out about a year ago, um, which was uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse. Oh, yeah. Um, game has a great deal of issues. Uh, you know, loads of them. Really, I mean, it's it's really. I would not. <laughs> I would no not say any problem. No, that's right. The more I think about it, it's actually <laughs> awful. So maybe I'll go. <laughs> no, look, believe me, it's not a great game. Um, that said, I really enjoyed playing it. I mean, I have like let me let me actually take a look and see how many hours I have in it. Um, I uh, I have I have seen, I, <laughs> I really enjoyed my thirty minutes of playtime <laughs> in uh, Dragon Ball Zeniverse. No, I, I have uh, seventy eight hours in Dragon Ball Zeniverse. Wow! And God damn. Okay. Yeah, I I really enjoyed playing it, and and you know I I it it had I mean it had some serious netcode problems. Mm. It had some serious always online DRM problems There's where two. you just kind of you like couldn't play um, the. Some of the like the controls got pretty clunky. Um, the combat got clunky, t like because of the controls and also part of the partly because of the animations. Um, it was very grindy. Um, you know, like there, there's there's like seriously like there's so many problems with the game, but I really enjoyed it. I had a great time playing it, and also in uh, you know like like I knew I was gonna have fun playing it mm -hmm. uh, because I mean the main thing was that you get to customize your own character in a uh in a dragon ball z universe and you know what like i i knew before the game came out i was like yeah i don't care how bad this is i'm gonna have fun with it and i did very I really good did. that is a great yeah. answer oh, very good yeah. yeah uh mathis you got anything uh people are gonna be like that's a cop-out answer um I really liked. Oh God, no! Go to Nick because I'm I'm gonna get yelled <laughs> at. For this Halo thing. Three. <laughs> somehow, if my answer can like diffuse yours. I don't understand. No, just you know, I, look, we're all gonna agree on this because we all think it was a good game, but there were problems with it. Was Hand of Fate was gonna be my answer. Uh, no, oh. it's a, that's a yeah, valid no, that, answer, man. Yeah, that's no, totally it's, valid, it's yeah. a Mario. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Mario. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, Hand of Fate. I mean, we all know the problems with that game, but it was really good outside of the problems in the combat. But uh, and it sounds like Hand of Fate Two is not going to fix the combat, mm -hmm. so Ooh. I'll probably enjoy it just as much, but we'll see. Yeah, you missed that conversation, Rob. We're all a little disappointed to hear that Hand of Fate 2 will feature basically the exact same combat as Hand of Fate 1. Uh, uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Why are they making the second one if they don't change that? I don't get it. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, the graphics game... are going to be better. Yeah. That's oh. good. I mean, that, that one intro scene where he's, like, flipping the cards around, like, that's, like, that's so cool, and, like, every... It, like, all of the elements of that game were like awesome except the combat was just kind of shitty yeah, yeah. Ugh, that's a yeah, shame it's a bummer yeah nick what do you got uh, i guess i'm gonna double down on being the salt factory for this freaking entire <laughs> podcast so i love you man i appreciate it um i mean this in the gentlest way mm. uh but i'm gonna go with dark souls 2 on this i really enjoyed the fact that i couldn't i could have this experience with ryan and josh in early access before it was released to the public and we could all share stories and the infinite wonder of what could be in dark souls 2 was still ahead of us i found that was the perfect way to play the game there were no hints there were no spoilers uh, there was no uh, no joining summons. It was just us and our stories and our wits in a battle to the end of the ages. I thought that was a lot of fun. And ultimately, you know, Dark Souls 2, I think, has some problems. I think I've gone over that more than anyone would like. Uh, but <laughs> that's that's my opinion. How about you, Bear? Man, I Halo. just... Yeah. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> all of the Halos? Every single one. They're wow. all so damn broken. <laughs> I man, I just I really don't have a good answer for this one. I'm sorry. I wish I I could wow. spin it some way. Wow, Master Chief Collection. I I'm trying to think of the, the okay. That's like that is basically it, right? Like I was thinking about it. Like Master Chief Collection is probably the answer, but it's Halo, and <laughs> it's the whole stick there. <laughs> well, uh, no, that's that's a fair answer. That that, that had a lot of thank problems. You, thank you for giving me the treatment we gave to Mathis. No. <laughs> At least I gave an answer, Bear. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna be Master Chief Collection, then. Yeah, I mean, it 
Well, the, the, the thing about that one is I hated the game because of all of its problems, so that didn't really bode well for me. Ah, okay. But I love the sum of its parts, you know, like, well, okay, no, that's that's the opposite. I love the parts that equate to the sum, more to the point. Oh, I thought... I, I oh, love man. every individual game that's a part of the Master G Collection, but the collection itself is a hot load of garbage that just fucking <laughs> sucked for a year or so and they still didn't fix it they took so long it was forever and they never fixed it ah yo <laughs> so i thought i thought I of an it. actual game that i fucking love mm. that is trash <laughs> all right i'm ready it's a from software game oh it's ninja like we're blade. playing next weird games now oh okay <laughs> ninja blade is so bad oh, Wait, but i've played through it that? twice I believe it's from that published it. I, I could be wrong, but I thought it was. I, I thought had a it was a digital from. copy of that. It's the only game I've ever digitally traded in. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Look, Ninja Blade is like quick. It's like quick time event. The game with like the stupidest story yeah. I've ever fucking seen. It is really terrible. <laughs> but I loved that game. Yeah. It was so That's funny that you loved it. I didn't know people had such positive opinions anywhere about I, that. One. I have no right to. It's bad. It is absolute <laughs> trash. At one point, there's like you're flying, like you're playing Ken falling on a missile, right? And then you got well, like at one point, like this big monster. You're just a ninja. You're just a regular human ninja, right? There's this big like monster, like takes this half a building and throws it at you. And what does Ken Ogawa do? He takes his like sling swords he hooks them into the building and he just stops it midair and just starts swinging it around <laughs> and throws it back at the monster and you're like how is that even humanly possible that makes no sense well maybe and he's he not a human ninja maybe he's mystically imbibed with powers of some they kind don't know, they, they don't really I mean magic. Know that. <laughs> they don't go down that route he just has the a plane is crashing and he pulls like a superman where he just fucking hooks his swords into it and just drags his feet on the ground. It's just like, Aah! and if you press X fast enough, you stop it. It's crazy. It sound like things that a human does, Mathis. That's, but I, but he's like, oh, listen, it's a great game. You should play it. Ken Paul's on Steam. It will give you like a solid eight hours of entertainment for just like how fucking hilarious on, that game it's is. It's on Steam, man. Yeah, 10 bucks. Yeah, there you go. I, I played it on stream way long time ago. That game is great. Oh my that God. game is so good. That's it's a, so bad. That's a perfect so answer, man. Good Fuck answer, your hand man. of fan answer. answer. Yeah, no, that's that's. <laughs> oh God, I want to. I'm gonna play it again now. I'm gonna reinstall it. I wish it. I had a Ninja Blade to to go back and hark on, man. Shit, I, all I've got is my stupid Master Chief collection. To oh, Ninja about. Blade should be the next Judge Mathis. Oh, fuck yeah. There you I'm go. <laughs> I love Absolutely. that game. It's so bad. I'm going to need a 40% cut on the ad revenue for that video for the <laughs> idea. Just put a claim on it, Bear. <laughs> yeah, you know, can, can dispute it now. He gets, the, he gets to put it all in this ima imaginary box up in the sky where uh, until it's disputed properly, it then rains down. That's 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 how I imagine that works. I don't know what your, your visualization of YouTube's copyright ID system is. Yo, send us more questions, Chad. Send us more questions, Everybody out there. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, Chance, for that good question. You can send your questions to roundtableyt at gmail.com for Ask Roundtable. Uh, time for everybody's favorite segment after that favorite segment, Next Word Games! Next Word Games this week, uh, well, if you haven't seen it before, Next Word Games is the segment we do every week where Nick and goes and uh, gets a weird game from his catalog of very many Nick's Weird Games. We try to guess what it is based on hints, and usually we have a little theme song, Dilly Dally, that we play beforehand. Rob is the guest. He Rob has to is start the guest. Sing. Rob, I'm, you gonna, just, I'm not going to... Can you just, like, what improv is... a straight-up theme song for us for Nick's Weird Games while he goes and gets a game? Can I put that pressure on you? Uh, Here we go. <laughs> All right, go ahead and get, get a Nick's Weird Games. Hurry, he's not going to last yeah, this is... <laughs> I think he might have already been prepared this time, and he's not, he's not letting me know. <laughs> I was trying to, uh, <laughs> yeah. I was trying to make Rob feel as awkward as possible without letting you know I already have a game ready. So we don't <laughs> oh, fantastic! Yeah, that's good. I can see that little, that, like, so. I can see it in your eyes, you little conniving thing. Yeah. Oh, right. Jesus! I'm not like the other guys. I suddenly think... turns sexy. <laughs> you little conniving. It always devil. does towards the end. <laughs> what, do you, what do you got for me, you sexy son of a bitch? All right. Well. Since Rob's here, that's sort of a special occasion. So I thought I would do something a little special, and today is not a PS2 game. Uh oh! It should have been a Nintendo game. You're right. Yeah. If I <laughs> oh yeah, really. <laughs> should have been Pikmin. About it. <laughs> uh. I think we would have gotten fucking Pikmin. There. 
<laughs> well, we just had so much trouble describing the genres. You never know. Uh, if you tried to describe hey. Pikmin without saying, like, it's these little colored dudes that you have to throw at things. Whoa, whoa, whoa. First there. of all, <laughs> let's take a step back. That's they're a colored. literal Wait. description of Pikmin, man. Come on. <laughs> all right. Control. We're losing everything. Yeah, I've yeah. got a an Xbox 360 game for you guys nice. today. Here we go. I want okay. you to have a chance. <laughs> I will warn you though, this is not an easy one. Fable. There's a chance you may have never seen this game before. Oh no. Okay. Oh, okay. But it is not. It is hey, not okay, a high chat. Rob, you got to hide chat before they get. Yeah, hide chat. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. I will do that. Did it. It is of North American origin, so there is a chance you've seen it. But it was a, a not well. Uh, uh, pressed game. There was not a lot of copies of it that were available. Okay. All right. So let's start with it was okay. a game that was developed by De uh, Game Republic, uh, published mm -hmm. by Namco Bandai Games, mm -hmm. and it was released in North America November 23rd, 2010. Uh, it was oh. released on both Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. It is an action adventure puzzle game and exclusively single player. Okay. All right. Mm hmm. So, the story is set uh, in a once prosperous and fruitful kingdom, which is overtaken by a mysterious darkness and thrown into disarray. Uh, while many citizens attempted to explore and find out what was going on, uh, they were never to be seen again, and the decay continued. Uh, so, there is essentially two main characters to this game, and it functions mostly like uh, an action-adventure puzzle game, like I said. Uh, there's going to be a, a variety of set pieces, and you're going to be doing your best to explore the kingdom while also revealing uh, important facts about one another. Any guesses? No. Um, mm. Not at all. Man. 2010. That's, that's, like, that's like five years after the Xbox came out. Yeah, like that, middle that of was cycle. surprising. Yeah. The director for this game was also the director of Tekken 6. <laughs> okay. Huh. I think and it shares was... many conceptual similarities with The Last Guardian. Oh. oh, okay. I'm giving you so many hints yeah, right no, now. This is. Um... The game was actually given a 9 out of 10. Wow. And was called what? one of the most memorable, enjoyable games I've played this year no, by the Daily Telegraph. Oh my god, you can't call it one of the most memorable games he's played. Now we look like idiots. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing, man. Yeah, I got, well, I'll be no honest, idea. though, that review was an outlier. Most of them were not that good. They were average, uh, like, 7 out of 10, okay. generally. It was still pretty good. Mm, yeah. uh, uh, there's yeah. also a quote here. This isn't overtly a kid's game. The translations and voice acting are almost comically silly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got nothing. Mm, I got nothing. No, no guess. Not I, like, not, I, like no, no I like the build-up to this one in particular, though. I'm very curious yeah. to find out. You feel I've given you a fair shake? Is there I anything? Do, yeah. uh, I do. I yeah, feel like you gave us everything we could. My get. shake mm. has been fair. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, a fair waggle. Yeah. Let me see if uh, yeah. let me see if chat got it because there's a chance maybe they. Oh, I see one. All good. All right. Give him a shout out real quick. Hey, I'm just going to the top to see what the first one might be okay. in case that wasn't the first person that got it. I want you to give him a shout out so oh. I can find out who it wasn't chat. Zadrunus <laughs> has the winning answer. Nice. The uh, the correct game is called Majin in the Forsaken Kingdom. I've never oh, heard of it. All right, that title I've doesn't look familiar, that. but that creature does. He kind of mm. looks like uh, where the wild things are, doesn't he? A little bit yeah, like one of those kind of guys. He's got that vibe. Yeah, no. Hold on, I've heard of that. Majin and the Forsaken Kingdom. Oh yeah, I've seen this. Yeah. Alrighty. Yeah, I picked it up. I always meant to play it, never got around to it, and now it's a Nick's weird game all these years later. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. How, how I never many times have purpose. changed? <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Yeah. Everything comes full Congrats. circle, man. All right. All right. Who was that in chat again? Well, I saw Zadrunus, but I think there were maybe a couple others in there that got it. Uh, apologies if you were what you thought to be the first person, but I'm just doing it the way it showed up in my chat. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for uh, watching it. this episode of Roundtable Live. Thank you, Rob, for joining Woo. us. Rob, what would you like to pimp to people? Oh, uh, I I am Rob, also known as Alpaca Patrol. You can find me uh, Alpaca Patrol everywhere. Uh, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. It's all the same. Um, it's all the same. And, uh, <laughs> it's, all, it's all the same. It's just a bunch of slop that I just shovel out to the masses. No, um. 
No, but go, you know, go follow me all those places. I stream, I uh, do YouTube, I, uh, I tweet funny cat pictures, and also have my Discord that's uh, available for everybody to hang out in, too. So, yeah, all that stuff. You gotta stop promising all these cat pictures, man. We've seen a severe <laughs> decline yeah. in your cat there's picture been, feed. Yeah, Get them going. There, there's been less lately, but they'll, 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 they'll come back. They'll have their glorious return. Don't Nintendo <laughs> us on those cat pictures, man. You know what we want. <laughs> Well, thank our patrons for this episode as well. If you are uh, considering supporting the show, please go over to patreon.com slash roundtable. We really appreciate those uh, one, two, five, ten dollar pledges every month. What word did that We say? need them, was... guys. We need them if you can. Yes, thank you very please. much. Uh, special consideration, of course, for those who have gone above and beyond those pledging at $20 or above on the Patreon. I want to shout them out right now, including but not limited to Julian Abelsgard, Scrody119, Greenlight, Mavier, Oren Saltzman, Christopher Flagg, General Crunk, Alexander Spillman, Jonathan Graham, Matt, Brizzle Brit, Myth Scarab, Eric Schooley, Mediocrity, Super Monoman, Samurfet, Logan Ray, Justin Positron, and Ignacio0891. Thank you guys so much for your support over there on Patreon. Uh, feel free to go support the show over on uh, iTunes as well if you want to rate it five stars over there. You can discuss the show and all of its good features, those in particular, over on roundtablepodcast.reddit.com. Also follow us over on Twitter at roundtablepc, and uh, you can catch the VOD of this show if you missed it over on SoundCloud. You can also download it on iTunes. should go through there as well. And you can watch it over on any of our YouTube channels, excluding Rob, unless he decides to post it. You are free to do so, man. Get that, get that ad revenue. Do it. Yeah, who knows? Maybe I, I didn't I'm record any it. of it. So. I'm claiming yeah, it. No, I'm just I'm setting you up so we can claim you instantly. You, ah, you fair enough. Bitch. Yeah, no, you, you, <laughs> I'll dispute it, you motherfuckers. <laughs> oh, that yeah. is uh, that is it, I believe. Thank you guys very much for watching. We'll be back next week. We do it sh every Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6, p 6 p.m. Yep. Yep. Eastern time. And uh, that is our show today. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. Please forgive me. <laughs> <Nintendo>. <laughs> <laughs>